Jebatulo Mishbaha Yisraya, the day at the house of Yah's elect, his people that scattered throughout the nations of the earth. We greet you all in the blessed assurance of the only name given unto man, whereby his Yasha, his healing, his deliverance is granted upon a people, and that is in the name Yahshua Hamashiach. So we greet you. And that most excellent, most beautiful, most precious name that Yah has opened up his bosom unto Yisrael, that he may make known his mind, his leba. As the elders would say in the days that what's on their souls, or the nefesh, that he opens up his conscience unto Yisrael as our zakhain, the Ramiya, as he read the mitzvah. That is what governs the heart, the love of Almighty Yah. And that is what must govern the mind of Yisrael. We must seek out his mind, his conscience, in all matters that pertains unto his sadiqa, his righteousness. And his sadiqa is the order of his statutes, his hook, his wisdom, his hukmah, and that is the experience of his own mind that as he ponders matters, as he causes them to be elevated in his mind, that he allows us that experience that we may experience him in that matter. And above all his mishpatim, the judgment of Almighty Yah. He is one that corrects all matters. We as a nation of people, we must be God. To correct all the ills that are in us, whether they preside in us, whether they have a tremendous power to orchestrate or to guide us into a certain thing that is opposed against Yah, we must with a vengeance, we must begin to judge all matters that oppose Almighty Yah. We cannot continue to allow ourselves. Uh, to become at ease in Tizahun, that we are in Yerushalayim, and then by some chance through the gates of the city, we have been able to finagle and bring in those things and the filthy garments that are vile and they are filthy, they are corrupt, they are johath. They have been marred by our flesh, they have been stained by our perverse, perverted activities and because of that there is a curse upon the people the children of Almighty Yah it begins in the Leba in the mind in the conscience and the depths of a man's worth and everything that we are worth it is played out here you want to find out what you are worth let this play it out it will show us what we are worth and our worth is not very much at all israel we greet you all that have joined us by the live broadcast we do brach yeah for all things as we have some of the earth uh, there in jamaica as they have arrived safely and our precious ach travis uh, he had a place prepared for them uh, he retrieved them and so what a great blessing that is. He said to me one day, as he called me, he said, that Re'ach, you're genuine, and I am genuine, and I will do right by the Ach. I will honor them because you're a genuine man, and I am genuine in my approach, my desire to fulfill all that Yah commands me to fulfill. There are not many people that are genuine in the world today. You don't find them. You find those that are superficial with false pretenses. They are not sincere. They have been developed by this most damnable corruption. And it begins in their own minds. We want to displace that on others. But it began the zero of the seeds in your own consciousness and is there 
And the only thing that's going to eradicate it, it's going to take a sharp two-edged sword. We have holes in the garden that we use. I like them when they are sharp because when they touch the weed, I don't care the thickness of the weed, it brings it down. And during the course of using it, uh, it becomes dull. And the only drawback from that sharpness of that hole is that it tends to cut the drip. And so the waters will pour out of the drip if you're not very, very careful with that tool. We must take the tool of Yah's instrument and begin to allow it to cut out this cancerous disease of our own minds. We don't seek the mind of Yah to reveal unto us the acts, the actions, or what course we should take. It should always be in our minds this saying, quote, if it be the will of Yah, it shall be so, unquote. We don't give a damn today because we don't say that. We lay out and mandate our own will. We don't say, Yah, if it's your will, I go. We simply say, I will go. If it be the will of Yah, if it be what pleases Yah. That is what Yah's will is, the hafiz, what pleases him, what delights his bosom, what causes him to rejoice if it be Yah's will, then it will be so. Thus, the matter, matter is uh, sealed in the will of Yah. A nation, we are people, and I am going to close out from the message I began, that we must seek the mind of Yah. I want to say this, but I want to introduce this verse again in Wehira Leviticus chapter 24 and verse 12. When the one began to not to speak perverse things of the manner, the nature, the Ruach of Almighty Yah, he began to blaspheme. This is a nation that the whole mind is established upon blasphemy against the Torah as we are so conscious of that, that the religious sector or this damnable, twisted harlot that is called the church you should eradicate that out of your vo vocabulary when it comes to Yisra'ya. You just simply say the house of Yisra'ya. And the word church should be eradicated because I will take us on a journey today. I'm going to read a portion of Yah's resume because he desire to seek residency in our bosom. Come and make my land, your home. That's what he desires. And in order for you to incorporate yourself with him, we must understand certain tenets of his resume. You're not going to get employed unless you have a resume. What is a resume? It is a history of one's character, one's experience, one's work experience that is what a resume is it simply does not entail just one's uh, working experience but it tells of the degree of accomplishments it tells of uh, what kind of exerting that man or that individual has done to uh, claim to the pinnacle or to the position that that one is in and the position that the one is seeking uh, as well. Yeah. So we must understand in order to seek or to know to reside in the Melchut, the kingdom of Yah, we must understand his resume for him to reside in our bosom, in the midst of Yisra'ya. There was one that began to 
perversely attack the character, the name, the Ruach, to say that the great things that were done among Israel, the mighty hand of Yah revealed, it was not of Almighty Yah. And to ascribe that to one of the most damnable images of our mind, and that is the image of a God. It is one of the most vilest and reprehensible thing uh, in the Torah, in the writing uh, of the book, in the Sefer. And everything that is said about any damn God, it is wicked. It is vile. It is corrupt. Or as our Zachin expressed the Elohim, which uh, implies the plurality uh, of the gods. We don't need to ascribe unto him the title Elohim or the title or any other title ascribe unto him his name. It's all in telling conclusive as to who he is, Yisrael. And we must understand that. And that's why when we hear the name of Yah, it causes a revival in our bosom. Our ancestors, those that were brought uh, over to this land uh, during the time of the diasporas, uh, in the heat of the temperature that we've had here, and as they labored in those fields uh, of burden, uh, they will be done to sing that song, Kumba here, yeah. And it will cause a revival of strength. Uh, of nourishment to nurture their chick for their hope. We don't give a damn today. We simply do not care. May I interpose? There are those that simply think that if I would alter my approach, my language, then others would listen. Yoshua showed the greatness, brought forth the epic of Yah's Ahava, his Ahav, his love. And yet no one gives a damn today, and they don't love him. Just like we don't love him. If any man says he loves Yah and guards not the mitzvah, the commandments, he is a damn liar. I don't care if it's your granddaddy, your grandmother, son, daughter, mother. It makes no difference at all. It's either that there is no immutability, that you cannot charge Yah with anything in Yah, and that he has lied to us, or we are the damn liars. I take the latter. I incriminate me. I am the damned liar. I am the one that is Rasha. I am a criminal and I am hostile toward Almighty Yah. That's all the word damn is. It is a hostility toward Yah. It is a mind that is of hostility toward uh, the commandments of Almighty Yah. It is a mind as we brought forth on the Chakve Imet, uh, the Lutz, Lutz, those that despise. They have this aversion to truth. They don't like it. And so when you began to speak truth, they began to speak the thoughts of their own minds, which is not of Yah Yisraya. So there are those that perceive and believe that if I would alter things somewhat, then others would listen. Maybe there would be some support, and then the house would be filled. I'm reminded that Yahshua said unto all those that followed him, they had enjoyed the fish and the loaves of bread. Yet he commanded them, if you want to be one that is disciplined by the power, the revelation of Torah, then you must eat my flesh. And then you must consume this living drum. And when they pondered the matter, even those that were close to his bosom, they considered it a heart's matter. And then the 5,000 or so, they began to triculate. 
away from Yeshua HaMashiach. And when the matters are brought forth to us, we say that these are hard matters. It is truth. These are difficult matters. Who can't adhere to that? Who among us can accomplish that? Well, Yah did not leave anything to chance. He knew the frailty and the weakness of our flesh. That's why he sent forth Yoshua HaMashiach. He did not leave us comfortless. He said, I will send, I will pray to the Abba, and he will send unto you that the one that will nocham, will comfort you, will soothe you, will satisfy you. How? Not in our lust, but in what is written already in our bosom. In our bosom. That he has written his Torah in the bosom of Israel. And it only, and the only way it can, or the drawing of out of that well, it must come by the Ruach HaKodash. Not the damnable twisted Holy Ghost. I won't take any word back. If no man stands with me. You're sure when that no man stood with him. Those that said that they loved him, they abandoned him. The only ones with, were Miriam. Miriam Magdalene, the women that followed from a distance. And the woman represents the tenderness of Yah's hands upon his people because that's how feeble we are. We're weak and we're feeble. That's why we must say, we that are weak, Yah, I am strong. It is through the power of Yahshua HaMashiach that I can perform all things according to the Torah of Almighty Yah. We cannot on our own do or accomplish anything that is mandated. We see the history of our forefathers and they failed on every tribe, on every behalf they failed. And because of that, they began to allow the perversion and the wickedness of their mind to enter in and try to displace or remove the constitution of Almighty Yah. And once they began to do that, then the vileness of every kind of abomination, every vile, detestable, wicked, stinking, deplorable thing began to develop in their mind. And then they began to blaspheme and turn against the ways that were proven and established unto Israel by the hand of Almighty Yah, His right hand, His Yad, His strength, Yeshua HaMashiach. And because of that, then we are in a deplorable state. Our minds do not think on the things that are heavenly, our minds are consumed with natural things because we don't give a damn. So to you that believe that if I alter my grammar and begin to inject words of soothing, everything that Yah speaks to us is a soothing consolation. He warns us. He tells us. He shows us his affinity, his affection, his care for us. And then we tend to say, who are you? I don't need that from you. Again, let me read from Weyira, Leviticus, chapter 24, verse 12. I will stay the course today, but I want to give us a hint of your resume. And I want to uh, articulate meticulously each word that I read in his resume. Because the one that uh, look or take the resume and to look at it, they must be very studious and they question everything that is written on the resume. 
Every word speaks to them. So is every word of Yah, is it pure? Are we the servants of Yah, his Ebet? Then we therefore ought to love every word that he speaks. So how do you have a distaste for certain portions of his truth? And there are other things that you will say that's not him. We don't know Yah. And that's why this most vilest, reprehensible whore that we call the church that has polluted our minds with all kinds of pig hole, every kind of damnable, abominable, twisted ideology, thought, concept of the Most High, it must be brought down to the gates of hell. We must cast it down, cast it out. We must eradicate it from our minds. That's why our actions, our deeds, and our attitudes, they never change. Because this is a dominant Jezebel. She dominates. She is cruel. And she is mean. Her concepts are cruel toward Yah. I don't give a damn if she dresses herself as a Baptist, a Methodist, a Pentecostal, a Holiness. She is the same. She's still a dirty whore. And you go on the streets, whores dress differently. She's still a dirty whore. I don't care if the one has on a $1,000 Tiffany dress. A one went to Walmart to the dime nickel store. She's still dirty. She's filthy. I don't care how you dress her up. She is still dirty. I don't care for emphases uh, and the and the amount of mental uh, building structure. She's still a dirty dog. She's a dirty slut. She's a dirty whore. And she is infested with every kind of disease. That's why we can't get beyond ourselves and the nature of our minds because her filthiness has metastasized. It has spread itself in us. And we can't get beyond this filthy dirty stinking whore that is called the church that's what she is and the torah the khatve is precise in her identity her character we can't get beyond that and out of that spirit of this whore we have seen this blasphemy against the name of the most high these individuals have disdain for it they hate it and we're so damn intimidated to speak his name there is no name that's more precious than our abba i have not experienced that of having a biological father but i'm quite sure that any son that knows his father that there is nothing more precious and more sound than that name. Than that name. When they yada, when they experience the very nature and the power of that individual and they associate this character to that name. And so this dirty slut, she was, she was very seducing and alluring to draw the people away to her bosom and to intrigue them with this tainted milk from her breast that began to kill. So when the master saw those singing Kumbahaya, it was something to that sound that was different that in the sound of the dogish whole houses they were in. So the mindset evolved to immediately began to alter that and to bring them into the fold and to teach them of the gods, the goddess, uh, and those that are over, uh, uh, under, or those that are in our pantheon of great gods. Damn every god. The Elohim, damn them all. There's only one Almighty. He is great, and his name says it all. You don't have to dress Mr. President Barack Hussein Obama. You hear the name, you know who he is. The name alone speaks enough. Whether you use the sir, the preference of his name, President, 
he is still the president. I don't give a damn what others are the wicked ones that despise the man. Hell, I'm not looking for him to do anything for me, for my help to come from Almighty. Yeah. I'm not looking for Obama to do nothing for me. My help comes from Almighty Yah. But you don't disregard the King. Yah says that we just pray that we can live quiet and Mr. Barack Hussein Obama gives us no problems. He won't give me any problem. Hallelujah. So this vile nature arose in the midst of Yisrael in the book of Wehira. One verse I want to read, 24-12. When this one began to blaspheme, they laid hold to him and they put him in the ward in the prison. For what reason? That the mind of Yahweh might be shown them. That Yah's mind may be revealed. That the revelation of Yah's concepts, his thoughts, may be known unto Yisrael. That his thoughts that his will what pleases him may be known now we know the results of what transpired because he blasphemed the integrity of Yah he was brought out to the gates of Yerushalayim hands were laid on him to witness against this devious damnable work of that mind and it had to be eradicated out of Yisrael unless it would pollute and corrupt all of those that were in the camp. You understand that that's why Yah had to destroy the first world. I want to read this scripture. Hallelujah. Out of the book of better sheets. Turn there quickly. Hallelujah. There are sheets. Chapter 6. Just a few verses I want to read. Hallelujah. There are sheet chapter 6. Verse 11. It says here in better sheet chapter Six verse eleven. Yah says that the Olam also it was Shahath. The earth, the Olam, his creation, it was very corrupt. It was a rotten, spoiled, wicked, oppressive type of conscience and mindset that man deliberated in. He did not seek the mind of Yah. He sought his own thoughts. The earth was also corrupt before Yah. And the earth was filled with Hamas. It was filled with cruelty and violence. Is not the earth filled with that today? As we saw this most demonstrative act that took place yesterday in Norway. Listen, this is the place in Oslo whereby they grant the Nobel Peace Prize unto those constituents that they think that is worthy of that prize. Do not forget that Mr. Barack Hussein Obama was the last one to receive that great distinguished honor from Oslo. And this is the same man that is sending the drones to butcher the babies in Afghanistan. This is the same man that is uh, mandating uh, covert activities uh, to shoot individuals in the head uh, and to kill them. Uh, but yet out of that city, uh, whereby it's supposed to be the zenith and the pinnacle uh, of Shalom, it is a damnable, twisted, wicked, vile city. There is no Shalom to the wicked. Uh, saith Yah. They are wicked. They are the offspring of the wicked. They are the offsprings of what uh, uh, Yaramayah, our Zachin, read to us, uh, that he will bring a curse uh, upon the children down to the third uh, and the fourth generation of their avat. 
that hated that son that despised him. It's a cursed generation. We have not seen the rewards of it, Yisraya. It is a generation. It is that mind that uh, teaches and spread the blasphemy against the very nature and the beauty of Almighty Yah. And in the city of peace, where the peace award is given out, well, I thought that was uh, the city of Yerushalayim, which implies the city where Shalom is Loma taught. That's what Yerushalayim means. The city where the Shalom of Yah, the peace of Yah, is taught. And yet they say this vile, repugnant, wicked, unclean place. And yet the first thing that they began to identify was, they said terrorists. And yet it was one of their own sons. One of their own sons that butchered 80 of their youth. One of their own sons that despise the government. One of their own sons that shot down the innocent ones in the back of their heads and blew them away. That's the nature of this mind. I use the word, listen to me, Yisraeli, and you that got your little, your little effeminate ways, go find someone else. I'm not going to stop assaulting this damnable mind I call the white mind. It is a corrupt, wicked mind. It is a mind of death. It is a mind that says it is superior to the mind of Yah. Those Israelites did not seek the mind of Moshe. They did not seek the mind of Yahushua. They sought the mind of Yah in the matter. And that's what the old ones would do. They would gather in the little places that they gather in their conclaves and they would pray. Hell, no one prays today. We might as well be legitimately honest with ourselves uh, and quit posturing, pretending. Uh, let's get real and do it real. Raise up the Nobi, God the prophet. I'm going to do a teaching on the, the mechanism, the mechanics of a prophet one day and show you. And if a prophet walked in here, we will all turn our back on him. The earth was filled with Hamas violence. The earth was filled with cruelty. There was such injustice in the earth because we despise the Torah of Yah. And the Almighty Yah, he looks, he inspected. He looked down, he looked upon the Olam, and behold, all he could see, or only my mind, he saw, he said that it was Shahath. The earth was corrupt, it was perverted, it was rotten to the core, it had destroyed itself. What? Not simply the earth, but those that had given charge and had command over the earth, that's why he's going to destroy them that destroys the earth. He says, for all, not some flesh, but all coal, all bazaar, or, that's amazing that flesh is enunciated bazaar, or like a buzzard. Bazaar, all the buzzards, and the buzzards will eat anything, will they not? They are the scavengers of every vile, unclean thing upon the earth, are they not? The vultures, the buzzards, they will eat anything. So it is with Yisraya, we will eat every unclean, vile, abominable thing that penetrate our minds, we will eat it, we will die on it. We will fellowship in that spirit, Yisraya. He saw that all flesh, had corrupted his way upon the earth. Not only had man corrupted his way, his attitude, but he had corrupted the ways of Yah, the derach, the commands, the Torah, the instructions of Yah. Have they not tried to do that today? 
They have corrupted the ways that they are. The way that we must walk therein. That it will produce the very mindset of Yah. And so when the Zokin, when he answers a matter, he will not answer out of some kind of twisted emotionalist type of consciousness. But he will answer out of the mind of Almighty Yah. And his answer will be according to the will of Yah. The delight of Yah because he has through the wisdom, the bina, the hukmah of Yah, he has developed through the da'at, the knowledge of the sermon, that mind which was in your sure, that mind is in him. So when he answer, it may not seem as though that it is the kind of answer you are looking for, but it is the answer of Yah's mind. Can you imagine that Yisraelites, that when Yah said, kill the bastard slip, get him out of the camp. Can you imagine her mind and her emotions, how that played into the effect and the effects upon her and his avat? Can you imagine that? The thoughts of Yah as high as the earth is from Hashem am. So are the direct the ways of Yah. His thoughts are far greater than our thoughts. He wants us to think like him. Every father, every avat, if he's a decent human being, he will train his son to think like him. He wants him to act like him, to walk like him, to talk like him, to be like him. If I had a son, I would want him to act like me. His mannerism to be like mine. His talk to be like mine. His attitude to his character, his personality. I want it to be like me. And if there are others that he tends to draw favorably to them, then that will create some kind of jealousy. What am I doing wrong? I, I want to know why is it that my son deferred to me and prefers someone else. That's any decent man wants that. He's not a decent man if he doesn't want that. Flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. And this is profound here in verse 13. And Yah Asa, he spoke, he uttered unto Noach. He says that the end of all flesh is come before me. For the all land, the earth is filled with Hamas. This nation has filled the atmosphere with all kinds of violence with their satellites the debris their trash they have trashed the earth now they're trashing thinking they're trashing Yah's kingdom the heavens above Yah says that it is full of violence the earth is filled with violence through them through man, through men. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Yah says, I'm going to destroy them. And violence fill the earth today. We can look at our metropolitans throughout the earth today and the nature of violence is everywhere. Violence on television, violence in your video games, violence with even the little ones to the grown ups, violence, this Hamas, the Hamas, this cruelty. Whatever we saw, are we not going to read? Yah is not mocked. He doesn't want us to be deceived, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Has the earth sown violence? Hamas and the nature of Hamas is this nature of cruelty so it has sown that hasn't it I want you to understand that because we're going to read a little of Yah's resume we don't like as a nation as a people to confront the very ills of our bosom Yisrael and this is a nation this damnable thing we call the church 
She is a vile and she is a cruel, wicked Jezebel. She has violently opposed the Torah of Almighty And out of this vile stench, polluted, rotten, shahat of hell, shall arise this anti Hamashiach, the spirit that is against Yah. When one is against Yahshua Hamashiach, they are against the living Torah of Almighty And so she has created in the mind of the subjects and that DNA has been passed down to the generations of the children and the children children and the children of the children and they are perverted and they are wicked and so when a messenger stand and he began to revile and speak against this damn twisted mind because we don't want to hear the mind of Yah and what the mind of Yah speaks is everything written in this Sefer, is this the mind of Yah speaking? So if I read anything out of this, I'm speaking unto us the mind of Almighty Yah. Is that proper to say? Can, can, can I get an amen to that? Is that? Okay, so it is Yah's mind. Anything I read. So nothing is to be rejected. Nothing is to be disregarded. Nothing is to be put on the back burners because if Yah says it now, it is vitally important for us to understand the reason of his mind and why he would say the earth is full of violence today. The earth is full of Hamas cruelty. It is a cruel world. As Sam Cooke, even in his days, he wrote the song, this is a meaner world. This is a Hamas. It is a cruel world. It is a world of oppression. It oppresses. It destroys. It kills. It annihilates. And the strength of our arm is this wicked, dirty whore. You call the church. Come out of her, Yisrael. Come out of this damn whore. Come out of her logic, sir. Her thinking. You damn the twisted false ones that call yourself Hebrews. It's amazing to me. Can I interpose? We have those that call themselves the Hebrew Yisraelites. That they are of the lineage of Yisrael. Listen to me. They will all change their name to a Hebrew name. Abraham, Yitzchak. The Halaya, they will change their names. And they will take upon what they call the Hebraic aspect of the name, of the dress, and they still call upon a damn pagan Anglo Saxon name, the damned name of Jesus, and they say they know Yah, you're damn liars. If that is not duplicity, what is? You tell me you change your name? From David to David, you change your name from Jean to Raphael, and then you call upon a damn Jesus, a Lord and a God, a very Anglo, Anglo, a wicked, bastardized name, and you blaspheme the name of Yah, you will go to hell, man. This nation doesn't want a true prophet. It doesn't want even a simple messenger. You understand? There are men today that their speech is so flawed, they're ignorant, and they will pack a place like this. You understand? But a simple, meager messenger like me, well, um, he doesn't operate in this kind of character that is reflective of me I don't want to do that because if I operate in the character that is reflective of me you will find a dirty 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 dog a wicked thing it is only by the nurturing of your Torah that sustain or cause this leba, this mind that will rise up that fall prey to the mind of Almighty Yah Yahshua and falls down so how can you be a Hebrew 
when you change your name to, to a Hebraic name, when you dress like a Hebrew and you call upon an Angloid name, Jesus, tell me, talk to me, my friend. They're false. They're phony as hell. That's duplicity. Then go back to the name of Willie John James. Hallelujah. You have changed your name to reflect where you are from or your origins or your forefather. And you, you tell me the damn twisted God, the name you call on, doesn't reflect that one or reflect your name. You are a twisted man. You are a damn twisted woman. And it makes no difference who you are. I love to battle because I'm a warrior. And I love to fight. That's my nature. You know what, my imam? If things could be done, that's what we flat almighty yah in the context of my own mind then i could do it but it cannot be done that way it must be reflected in his mind it has to be israel so it is with this nation today you can find pills for everything but the person that utilized that pill must believe in the pill listen i want to say this i'm going to press on today i do take supplements take vitamins and things like that but those supplements have no effect on me and in me unless it begins here I don't give a damn what it is it must begin here so the Torah of Yah has no effect or it will not have an effectual working in you unless it begins here in the heart and the love and the love and this must be changed. It must be cleaned out. When I was alive, we had spring cleanings. We cleaned for the summer. We had a fall cleaning. You put back all the summer clothes, little that we had, we simply wore everything year round now. It's a little different now. I do have, uh, I really don't, because all of my clothing I can wear year round. But in those days, there were those that, we have the heavy wool and things like that. You put the wool coat back. You put the large uh, items back. Uh, and you make sure they are put back properly so that the moth and things like that will not destroy it. And so you began to bring out that which is ready for the fall. Things that are a little heavier from the light things you wore in the summertime. So we must put on the regale of the whole armor of Almighty God that we can stand against the powers of hell, especially this religious dogmatic spirit today, Israel. This is a nation that is full of Hamas. Yah says that the mind of man, it was uh, cruel, it was evil. Uh, there was Shahath. Uh, he had corrupted everything that he touched and everything today uh, that man touches today, he corrupts. Uh, he goes into a pristine, beautiful land, and the next thing you know, buildings everywhere, the air is polluted. All the species are, are dying. You think we're getting by with that? That's why Yah wants us to live simple and come out of the system of the world, come out of our ways of doing things. We're killing our bodies, we're killing our minds, and those that say they love us and we labor for, they oppress us. They oppress us. Come out of her, Yisrael Yah. Be ye separate. I want to point out a few tenets of Yah's resume. I'm going to conclude on this message on this week, all right? The power of this ga'af, this na'atz, this blasphemy, to deride, to speak evil of Almighty Yah, his name, and to say it has no place among this guhim, this nations or these nations of concepts of what a god is damn every god i plead to dom the blood of yoshua hamashiach for he came in the one that sent him his name and your damn jesus christ is anointed by the white man got his own anointing you black folks got your own anointing the japanese got their own anointing for their Jesus Christo Crucio is not of Yah. He is the one that was sent by the Most High. 
Yoshua was sent by the Abba. He was sealed. He was filled with an outpouring of the Ruach HaKodash. And that is the favor of Yah, the Ruach, the living substance of Yah. Come on, Yisra'ah, Yah. The Ruach is the breath of Yah. It is His life. It is His motivation that dwells in Yisra'ah. Yeah. It is the substance of what pleases Him. And when we are filled with the Ruach, we are filled with the Ruach of Yah. And our language is a pure language. We speak from the Torah of Yah. We don't speak from that damn twisted mind of Christianity. Damn that mind. Someone put a comment on one of our videos and says that uh, it is stinging, piercing, but it's the truth. And it is the truth that flows from this place. Hallelujah. I had nothing from us. Nothing at all. I want to read a little of Yah's resume, just some snippets of it, all right? Can I do that? I want to direct your attention to uh, Yeshua, Isaiah. Yah is going to have the conquest over Bavan, the city. As Zachain's uh, Benjamin remind us that we, Yisra'ya, individually as a nation, we are like a city that sits upon a hill. And when a city sits upon a hill, it is that the light of that city or the light of the Ruachem, the seven Ruachem of Yah cannot be hid. And so that is what Babel is. It was not a nation, but it was a city. It was a city in the midst of the nation. And from that city uh, spewed every kind of vile, repugnant aura that was against Almighty Yah. We live in the city, I live in the city of Jefferson, South Carolina. And out of this city spews every kind of wicked nature against Almighty Yah. I said to my Israel the other day, it is amazing that we get calls frequently around here for money and help. So a woman calls me the other day and says to me, I was at the post office or the telephone company and they told me that I can call you all and you will give me help. They did. Sir. My baby just got out of the hospital and I need to get my baby's drugs. That's the way the woman said it. I said to her, ma'am, uh, do you have Medicaid, Medicare for the child? Well, her Medicaid has run out and she began to respond in her most putrefied manner. I said to her, uh, ma'am, do you have relatives and those uh, that are in your community that can assist you in this matter? The only person I have is an 85-year-old aunt, and she is in the nursery home. I said, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, we cannot assist you in the purchasing of the drug for your child. And it was like, you said what? This is the attitude that this Jezebel You can't help. You could just sense in her speech. I said, no, we will not assist you in this matter. If she had said that she was hungry, I would say, come down here, put on a dress. You can come to our garden and you can pick okra, get some beans, you can get some food, and we will give you a rooster that you can bake. You understand? But this is the nature of this wicked world. This is how we are, Yisra'ya. When Yah speaks to us, we say, you said what? This is your mind? Well, I don't believe that, that a loving, quote, God, unquote, would do that. You hear that all the time. I want to show you the loving one of Yisra'ya, the one that created all things. Uh, the one that said he saw the corruption of the earth. Uh, and the one that has shown us forthrightly who he is, uh, his nature's character, the characteristics of his government, uh, and we despise that, Yisra'ya, he speaks to us for great warning. And because we do not take heed to his warning, we blaspheme. And I will show you the end of a blasphemy. That's why these liars that use the damn name Jesus, they're damn blasphemers. 
They're blasphemous against the Ruach of Yah because there's no Ruach of Yah in the name of Jesus. You understand? Then you damn hypocrite squatter, you take on a Hebrew name. Rid yourself of the Hebrew name, man. Come on, woman. They're damn hypocrites. They're phony, they're false, and they blaspheme the Most High's name. For out of his name came the power of his anointed one, and it did come in the damn name of Jesus. You don't understand the power of blasphemy and what is it entails and the destruction and the nature of Yah. It's going to be poured up upon the, all the earth for their sins and their blasphemy against his name. We must attribute all things to him. I don't care what it is. Death, life is attributed unto him. Quickly in the book of Yeshua, yeah. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 6. This is the conquest of Babel, this light that keeps shining in your conscience. When you want to do right, then there's a light that you think is the light of God. Because of this Babel nature, it is so confused, you allow that to lead you or to misguide you in the ways of Almighty Yah. And then you find yourself polluted. We find ourselves doing things that are not according to the teaching, the mandates of the Torah. The Nombi of Yah cries out as the voice of Yah utters in his uh, faith. The call of Yah, he says here <clears throat> in Yeshaya 13, verse 6. First of all, he says, I want you to yalal. I want you to howl like a beast. Like a beast in distress. Like a beast that cries and howl. He says, I want you to yalal. I want you to well. I want you to cry from a depth that you know not of. Why? For Hayam Yah, for the day of Almighty Yahweh, it is at Yah, it is at hand. It is at hand, Yisra'ya. You can stretch out your hands in any direction. You can see the plethora and the, and the destruction of every kind of Hamas wickedness and cruelty in a nation. Whether it's this nation or any nations of the earth. For the day Hayam Yah, Yah's day is at hand. He, ex he explains unto us how this day shall come. It says, it shall go, it shall come, it shall enter, it shall be revealed, it shall come as a shoulder. It shall come as a destruction. Yours says that my day shall come as a shoulder, it shall come as a day of great ruins. It shall come as a day of great Hamas, great violence. There shall be great desolation to who? Where? Is it just simply a central locale? Or shall it be pervasive over the world? He's talking about his day. We have not welcomed the day of Yah's visitation upon us. We have, we have rejected Yeshua HaMashiach. And you reject that name for a damn Christo. And say you're a Hebrew, you're a damn liar. Change your name. Then change that damn double name. Hallelujah. 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 He says this is a young. First of all, it is a day of should. Great, massive, terrible destruction. It is a day of devastation, annihilation. Now these are the words that Yah use. You must understand that the, that the subtlety of darkness, even in the translators, that's why Yah, again, he's going to speak to a people of a pure language. It is vitally important that we understand the depths of what he speaks unto us, Yisraya. It is vitally important for every messenger to search beyond the damn twisted limitations of their little putrefied, pure minds and seek the mind of Almighty Yah. That gives us a greater depth. It is a day of shoulds. It's a day of shoulds. Massive destructions. We have not seen anything out there where what we saw in the Midwest 
there in Missouri with the tornadoes. That's nothing. You see nothing with the bombings there in Afghanistan and Iraq. We see nothing. Hiroshima Nakasrachi, it has no no resemblance of the should, the destruction of Omaniya. He giving us a resume here. He's saying, let me in your heart. Let my Torah guide you. And because we love Babel, because we love confusion and folly, we say, hell no. I won't let you in. He's showing us his, his resume. He says, a day that is of havoc and violence. Who is this from? He says, from the Almighty. This is not from man. This is from Almighty Yah. I'm laying this down so we may understand the devastation uh, of this blasphemy that has, uh, has been entrenched and rooted in the earth uh, whereby we don't seek the mind of Yah. He gives us the results of this great time. Yah says, there shall be a judgment against all the go and all the nations. And all those that have embraced this system uh, of Bevel, this world system. And he says to that, you know what he speaks to us, Yisrael, as we will sit and tremble, you know what he speaks to us when he says this? Uh, he said, there's a time of his mishpatim uh, upon the system of Bevel, uh, the system of confusion that confuses us in the way and the order to bring the pure shaha, the worship unto Yah. He says, this time uh, is going to be a liberation and a freedom uh, for Yisrael. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring the dirty whore down and break it down. Uh, her stronghold, her powers, uh, how she has entrenched in your hearts. I'm bringing this damn dog down. That's what he is saying. That's why we should rejoice. Hallelujah. Well, I know that our numeric numbers are limited. Even when we gather, we should rejoice. Even this morning as we began to sing, it was not the singing of rejoicing. Come on, Yisrael. You sing from your belly. I sing from my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to have the instruments to get me worked up. Your shoe is alive in me. If I didn't believe what I diligently study and seek out, I would not waste my time. I believe this. This is what governs me and corrects me and judge me more severely than I judge you because you are not as hard on you as I am on me. And your hardness on me cannot affect me to the point whereby that I will resort to something that is evil or wrong to do to you. Because I'm tough on me. I am very tough on me. You understand? So your toughness, uh, just add another little uh, strength to my toughness. Hallelujah. He says, therefore, I want you to understand, shall all hands be uh, rafa? He said, all hands, uh, they shall be weak, there shall be no strength. Of a man's hand, he will have no ability to lay hold on matters and circumstances of his life and those things that tend to debilitate him. He said, All hands shall be feeble. And he says here, Yisra'ya, this is verse 7. He said, In every man's, not some, he said, Every man's love, it shall masla, it shall melt. Not just fall away, but Yah says it shall massa. It shall be as though that this disease has metastasized in his heart. He is on the deathbed. He is dying, and there is no recourse at all. His heart shall betray him and forsake him. Out of the heart flows the issues of life. In every kind of damn evil thing that comes out of us is there in our minds. You better get it right. It is time out. We have played the role of a whore too long. We have prostituted the mind of Almighty Yah. For what gain have we gained? Not a damn thing. We have not gained any gain, any inroads. For the heart of man, his love shall be massa. It shall, it shall melt. This is Yah. Is this his resume? 
it shall be a worthless thing. His heart shall betray him because it is a worthless thing. There is no tough thing that dwells in your heart, Yisra'ya. Out of the heart flows every kind of deceit. It is deceitful above all things and it is desperately wicked. That's why we must allow, we must nothan, let this bestow the mind of Yahshua. Look at all you've done to this point. We that are older and you that are grown. What has it produced but anything but corruption in our flesh? Because we are sown to the flesh and out of the flesh we have reaped corruption. He said every heart shall massa, it shall melt away, it shall become worthless because it shall be incapacitated with the filthy diseases of his own wickedness. You can lay it on someone else but it's your sowing uh, my friend Israel has sown this filthiness uh, and is coming back the rooster is coming home to roost as Malcolm X said what you have done in this nation the rooster is coming home to roost and the cock is going to crow Israel get out of this dirty whore get out of her logics of thinking uh, turn away from her ways her attitude uh, and allow the Torah of Yah to be established in our bosom. Hallelujah. 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 The mind of Yah speaks unto us. He reveals in verse 8. He says, and they shall be not just frightened, but behal. He said, they're going to be terrified. They shall be afraid. They shall be behal. They shall be in dismay. There shall be confusion. They won't know which way to go. They won't know where to run or where to turn to. I'd rather prepare for that day than to prepare for a day that uh, I got all the little dainties and the little things that I think that are tell for me. He says it's going to be a day of This is Yah. This is his resume. You better read it carefully. Those seers or those that study resumes, they look for those important words that you may inject that may be attractive or uh, uh, release the, uh, a, a sense in the brain of the one that looks at it. There are certain little catchphrases, there are certain little words that draw attention to uh, that resume over other resumes. You understand? So this ought to draw attention to Yah's resume when we see things like this. You understand, Yisrael? Hallelujah. He said, they shall be behal, they shall be amazed at what is taking place. And then he said that the seer of the pains, he is talking about the physical and the mental distress that is beyond anything that you have encountered in this life. He said, pains, and he says, hebel, or great sorrows. What sorrow is the hebel? It is the measure of sorrows that you have poured out, it shall be measured back unto you. Isn't it vitally, vitally important for you to understand the language of Yahweh's speech? That's what Hebel is. He says, uh, and sorrows, Hebel, it is your lot. It is your measure. What you measure out shall be measured back unto you. We must understand this, Yisraya. We have been doped by a dirty whore. She's made our minds dirty, our hands dirty, our thoughts, uh, our image of God's dirty about this damn wicked thing they call their Jesus. That is the, that is the image of the white mind. It is the vile damn image. Yeah. You will see that I'm racist. And yet these damn men that say uh, that it is not the image, why don't they denounce it uh, with, with, with veracity? Uh, why don't they say it's a damn lie? Why don't they say it is a pagan damn image? Uh, they won't say that. Uh, that is not even uh, the attributes of Yahshua HaMashiach. In the physical, the natural, no way at all. Uh, and yet this damn lie, it is purported. That's why these ignorant, crazy Negroes uh, and this damn uh, mentality of the whore change their name to say they're Hebrews and they hold fast to this damn twisted mind and call upon a damn Jesus. He's sweet. Hallelujah. There are not many that's going to love me. I'm a warrior. You're boasting all. That's the way I am. I do things and when I lay my heart to do a thing 
I do it with great tenacity. And I do it hard. I don't do anything lighthearted. Whether it's my tenderness toward you or whether it's my correction. I don't do it lighthearted. I do it with sincerity. And you are sincere here. Hallelujah. So I know that there's, there are not going to be many that walk with me. I understand that. That's, that's mine. That's mine. And that's my plot in life. And I have no compunction with that at all. You understand? Hallelujah. There shall be great pains and great chabel, your measure. And it shall, uh, hach, this, it shall take hold of them. It shall seize upon them. It shall possess them like a demon is going to possess them. They shall be in pain. He said they shall be in pain. You understand now, I, I am one that is always searching for divinity and meaning. He said they shall be in pain or cool. They shall be agonizing and twisting and turning their minds, racing. Have you ever been in a pain that your mind is racing so fast you don't know what to do? He gives us an example of the pain of the thralls of a woman. There are a lot of thralls of delivering a child. And the thralls implies that there are great pains of agony. And the latter throws their pains. There are women that have difficulty. I've never seen a child born in all of my life. There are you that have. But there are those that they go through what they call the latter throws. And the throws of those birth, birth pains, they become so intense. And we are the last of those thralls and we're going to see the pains. We're going to see the pains, Yisraya. But unto the true lineage of Yisraya, it's going to be that release because what's the pains over with my... You rejoice. The tears flow. Let me see the baby. Hallelujah. Let me see Yahshua. Come, Yahshua. That should be the cry of Yisraya. Hallelujah. 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 He shall take hold of them and the, and the pains. They shall be in great anguish. As a woman that's a uh, lath that travails uh, in her distress. And a woman that uh, I, I don't know is simply what I have read, what I have been told, uh, what I have measured from the speech of those uh, in overhearing conversations. You understand uh, her uh, lads. Uh, or this is a great distress she is stressful the pains override her logics and her thinking and when someone is kind she don't even know when they're kind because uh, because of the pain y'all's trying to give us a measure of sense of what it is like that's why he gave the path of Tizayon to labor among Yisraya that we can experience this that they're witness of this great emotional battle. Uh, it can be understood by everyone. And the man that helped bear forth his child, uh, he will understand that in a great dimension. That is why the world has taken that away from the people today. It has taken that away from Yisraya. They say they love Yah and they're afraid of every damn thing. Uh, let me say to you, when it's your time to die, nothing uh, is going to stop that. Hallelujah. As a woman that he had, so shall be, they shall be amazed, they shall be, they shall be so amazed, they shall be astounded, they shall be stupefied, they shall be so astounded that this is the one that loves everyone, this is the one that cares for everyone. Oh, they everyone know that for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. It doesn't mean a dumb thing. One day I'm going to teach on the gods of Torah and show you that no god is worth a damn. You show me any trait about any god that is worth something uh, then the one that we serve, if he is classified as that, that, then he is of the same nature of the gods. He is the master of all master. He is the rule of all lords. You cannot strive to him, but you strive unto them. Her Satan is the god of this world. He's the one that blinds the minds and the eyes through this whore that we call the church and religion. And there's nothing more vile than the church. 
Don't call us the church here because we're not the church. Hallelujah. We're Yisrael. Those are two words I'll correct people on quickly. Church, and then guys. Don't call us guys here. Get the filthy words. We're going to be judged by every idle word. Are we not? These are idle, wicked words. Do you know that there was a man that wrote me last week and told me I should stop using the word faggot? Because he's a damn faggot. He said, I used to sleep with men. Then you got it in your heart to sleep with another man. It sounds so street. Well, I'm dealing with a street mind. He said, you use it because that's your nature. I can say this and y'all knows I've never slept with a man. He said, I hope these brothers rise up and kick your ass. Now, if I use the word ass, then they rail at me because he's a damn faggot. And I would say that the wicked faggot is probably listening today. A twisted faggot dog. All fags go to hell. Damn every fag. It is a vile thing. You one of these damn dirty bastards, you're going to give them uh, this great recognition. Uh, and there are those that labor in this damn wicked country that our forefathers died and you don't give a damn about them. You are a damn wicked nation. You're a dirty bastard slip of a nation. You're a bunch of damn thieves and dirty bastards and dirty dogs. And I don't take it back. I'm not coming with some kind of little melancholy spirit uh, that you got to speak. Uh, your words are harsh. Uh, you're going to say, you're sure said, you're going to come. Uh, say, I did this in your name. I did that. He's going to say, you damn dog, depart from me. Uh, you're the workers of iniquity. You work off on. I never knew your damn dogs. Uh, is that cold? Or is it truth? It is truth. Hallelujah. You take this out and give it to your mama and let her listen to it. Take it to some of those damn false Israelites. They call themselves Hebrews. I am Reach Daiwit Yisraya. We are found on the internet. You can find me anytime. Hallelujah. They are phony Jezanites. They are the Jezebel spirit. They change their names. And yet you give your savior a damn Angloid wicked name of the Kerem of the nation of Latin and Greece you are a damn twisted liar you change your name now change it back to Willie Bob hallelujah can go around cannot go around cannot go around the Torah of Yah Yah Brach my Achshimri today there with Ach Travis there in Yamika I know they're going to have him to speak, hallelujah. They're delighted to hear word from abroad. Give him strength, yah, and fill his bosom with wisdom and knowledge, hallelujah. And he speaks as an or orator of truth, hallelujah. That's the truth. We pray for our chutz. It's there under the care of those that we hate that she has to be under. I know how I'm talking because I know there are wicked ones that are listening. They know already, all right? Hallelujah. Can't go around the Torah of Yah. I give them nothing to feed on. You understand? Damn them. Damn them. They despise Yah. I don't give a damn what they say. They have a form of fashion of what is right. But they deny the power when the truth begins to cut and to hack on that backside. I would say hack on that ass, that arse. But I would say backside because I know some of y'all get a little offended. And they can handle when it gets hot in the kitchen you got to run right you're safe hallelujah when the fire began to stoke up you got to run hallelujah hallelujah Yah says they shall be tana. they shall be so astound and astonished at this day and not only at this day but they're going to be astound and astonished one at another they're going to look at each other and see the reflection of Yah's terror in each other i know that this is complicit with what Yah said he says that their honey their face shall be like lahab like flame like a fiery sword it will be like a sword, the glistering of a sword that is sharpened to his teeth. 
You understand Israel? And so when a man sees that, if a man sees a sword, he's, he, he's boxed in the corner, he sees the glistening that you, he's looking at the sword, he's not looking at the man. And so their faces, faces or the ponim, their presence, will be an astonishment, amazement to one another. Because they're going to know that they were wrong. And they're going to know that they have not walked in the will of Almighty Yah. They have not walked in the strength of the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. They walked in the strength of a pagan Jesus. And that's why they sin, they defy the Torah, they, they, they damn the Shabbat. Yah says, as a Zachin Yerame Yaret, Yah says, is a Chacha Shabbat. He said, remember the Shabbat and keep it set apart. Keep it Kadosh. He means that. And we defy that we are damn dirty, wicked ones. I'm just telling you all of that way because we, we've defied the Torah of Yah. He commands us, Yisra'ya, to remember that and to keep it Kadosh, set apart from all other days. He means what he says because he says what he means. He doesn't alter his speech for me and no one. This little life that we have here, our lives are like what a vapor of smoke. It cannot be compared for the kingdom experience we're going to experience. And to be subject to uh, not a rigid to a law that brings about his beauty and excellence in the earth. Uh, we ought to delight that he brings the revelation of that to us uh, and make the simplicity of that known. Uh, that's easy to rest. Uh, it's easy to abandon the world for a day. Uh, and we are controlled by it. We are dominated by it. We are pressed by it. Uh, we, are, we are thrust by it. Uh, and Yah says, labor not on that day for, for nothing. I don't care what they do. You don't be a part of it. Come out of her. He meant that. He meant that. Even the old timers, even on that young Rishon, the first day, they wouldn't do certain things. They didn't go out to the restaurant. You didn't play no ball. You sat there on the porch. You did nothing. You didn't play. That's right. Even the religious conscience did that. They did that. We didn't do nothing like that. Until we got older, where we could get away from that. Then we did our own thing. But there in that house, as young ones, we didn't do it. Didn't even cook on that day. She did it the day before. Had everything ready. And that's how you ate. And yet, Yah says to us, remember, and we forget that. Woe unto us, Yisraeli. We got an ultimate price to pay. We don't believe him because this is his resume. Let me move quickly. He goes on to say hallelujah in verse 9. He says, Chane, or behold, Chayam, the day of Yah, goes or it comes. Can you believe that this is him? He said, it is a day that is Ach Zari, Ach Zari, it is cruel. It is a terrible day. I, on this past week when I had a moment, it was just that word that fascinated me and I began to look. Terrible, terrifying, terrifying. See these attributes of Yah. Do you not know that his name is a terrible name? I just began to search the Khafve just on. I'm a word man. I, I don't have the ability like these Ak and others to have a broad base of senses of things. I, I, I'm just an individual that refines one simple process at a time. Even when we came to this community, it was one thing that immediately that I knew must take place. We do one thing at a time. You don't do two things. You don't have three projects. You have one. You have one project at a time. You don't have four or five projects. There was only one time that I had two projects and another one began to start and it was chaos and mess. One thing at a time. One day at a time, sweet Yoshua, is all I ask of you. Just one project, just one thing, one thing, one. And that's the way my mind deals with matters. One thing, one measure. I don't look at the, at the broadness of a matter. I look at the simplicity. And then the broadness of the matter will be revealed out of the simple. It is the simple things that make you appreciate the, the things that are overwhelming. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yisrael. It is a day that comes. Uh, it is both cruel. Achzari. A day, you mean tell me? It's not a day where we're going to dance in the street and shout hallelujah 
He said, it is the day I want you to look at the indicators or the attributes of this day, of this yam of yam. First of all, it is a day that it is cruel. We have sown Hamas, we will reap Hamas. We have sown cruelty, we're going to reap cruelty. It is both, it's a cruel day now, and these are the two appendix, the two riders or the two things that are associated uh, or straight in this day. Uh, it, is, it is cruel both, uh, it is with the ebra, the continuous overflowing of the anger, the wrath of God. That is what his ebra is. Uh, it is an overflow without measure, without restraint, without conscience, because it is an arrogant uh, state of mind. Because he said, who in the hell? From the midst of you can stop my hand. I made you and not you yourself. And this is the reward I get. You blaspheme my name. You despise it for a damn pagan. No. no. It doesn't go over that easy. No, it's not going to happen that way. We want to get down to the real nitty gritty. Stand against me in this hour. Stand up, you mighty men. Stand up, you warriors. It's a day that is cruel and not only is cruel but it has the ebra the fury that is when you say what my mother will quit me at time yes ma'am yeah, the mama please be that's enough that's enough you begin to tell her that's enough and she didn't stop we're gonna tell God that's enough and he's gonna say it is I know it's not enough because you still don't realize who I am. I'm going to show you the state of that mind, Yisrael. We must, we must labor in the Torah. Come on, ach, we ach, you that are listening, you that are teachers, you that are, you that are the more, you are, you are the bezurach of the message of Almighty Yah and Yahshua. We must labor in the Torah. We must labor. We cannot present unto Yisrael these little, these little cheese and cracker messages. You understand? It's time for us to eat meat. Hell, we have eaten too many cheese and crackers and milk. We have rickets. Our bones have not developed even our mind. We need to step it up. Hallelujah. He says, a day that, uh, that is my Ebra, it is an arrogant. He says, and this is only, I've utilized this, you all ought to know this word, this, the fierceness of the Harun. It is the only anger of Yah. I don't want to experience that. Correct me, Yah. Judge us all today. Correct me in your Mishpatem, your mish. And not in your anger, unless you, Yah, bring me to nothing. I don't want to understand the Harun of Yah. That is the only superlative, the only adjective in the book that obstructs to Yah. Just one other place in the book of, of, of Shemath. But every time this word, this fierce anger, it is only Yah's anger. We have not tasted that, Israel. We have seen the hasad, the tender mercies of Yah, even in his, in his chastisement, we have still seen his tender mercies. We have not seen his harun. He's given us a resume to say, let me in. Let me in. Open the door. Let me in. He said, you shall see the manifestation of this for what of his anger, to lay the land desolate. To lay the land sham, to devastate it, to annihilate, to ruin it, to make it rotten, to make it corrupt, and nothing. It will be a land of stench. And we can see that in the plagues of Misraim. When the dead frogs and when they died, it, as Granny would say, it stuck to high heaven. And this is a land whereby there is no sweet fragrant of smell. That goes out of Yisraya. It is a filthy, vile stench that proceeds out of our bosom. We stink to high heaven. Our attitudes stink. That's why he sends warning. That's why he said to Nobi, he spoke, uh, he spoke unto us Yisraya some 800 years before Yahshua ever came upon the earth. And now the same living words speak to us. Uh, he's given us warning. He's given us uh, time to prepare. We must be done to prepare, Yisrael. Prepare our love to make our land the home of Yah. 
We must allow his Torah to burn deeper and to give the word the power to become entrenched in our hearts when our mind speaks, it speaks the mind of Yah. It speaks out of the power of the volume of the living Torah, of the power of Yahshua's testimony. We don't have it. In my days when they would sing that song, He's Sweet, I Know, hell, the whole house would be crying. Everybody would be broken. He is sweet, oh, I know. They didn't all have to sing it alike. If everything is not Cupcake City pattern cut out for us, we don't know how to respond. Oh, he is sweet, oh, yeah, sweet, I know. Oh, the strong, strong winds, oh, they blow, oh, he is sweet. Oh, he is sweet, I know, yes, you oh, he is sweet, he is sweet, I know. Oh, he, oh, he is sweet, sweet, I know. Even the blatant, wicked one could come in and sing that. As the earth has corrupted itself, we have corrupted the ways of God. Hallelujah. We must bathe in the soap or go down to the fuller's house. Make sure you play that message. Aksemi, you're on the fuller message after this. Those that will tag along and listen. You got to go to the fuller's house. You need the fuller soap, you said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh man. Hallelujah. Why will you do that, Yah? It shall be a day of fierce anger. You're going to lay the land in Shema, the waste. It shall be an appointment. It shall be desolate. For what reason? Why are we going to do that? You can't hide. You're not going to be able to hide. You're doing that because you're not going to hide. Can't go around. Oh, you cannot go around. I'm going to have to sing that song for you all. Hallelujah. You all don't sing it long enough for me. You sing that song, come and make my heart your home. I want you all to sing that. I want Achyabim when he gets back to even we set both of those pianos up and both of you play. Hallelujah. I'm not discouraged with our music, how you play, because there are folks that wish they had a little music. Hallelujah. And because we have this saturated mind that is so polluted. Well, it doesn't sound like it used to. Damn the way it used to sound. It sounds sweet in my ears. The same Torah is sweet today like it will be tomorrow and the next day. It is this week. Oh, he is sweet, I know. Oh, yeah, he is sweet, I know. I'm telling you the strong Winds may blow, they blow, the dark clouds arrive. But I got a witness to tell you that Yeshua. See that we, we get so caught up in the way that we think it should be. See, that's what the Torah does. It shows us as a way that seems right to you. But the end thereof is death. And all of your ways seem right. Where they don't sing it like that. Damn the way they used to sing it or what you have sang it. I never sing the same song the same way. I don't know how to sing like that. That's why I can never be a singer. I'm a preacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's going to be de desolate all of that. For what reason? He tells us. And Yahweh shall shamat. Yahweh shall exterminate Jomad. he's gonna annihilate he's gonna cause great devastation Yahweh shall Shomad the Hatta the sinners those that uh, impose upon Torah your damn Jesus and the damn lies your false Hebrews you're not real you got a Hebrew name and you give him a damn pagan name, you false liars. And shall destroy Shomad, the sinners, those 
that are exposed made ready for condemnation for hell. Those that have been reckoned, have been identified as the offenders of Yah, shall destroy sinners where out of it. He's going to bring them out. The day of great fire and great devastation. This is Yah's res resume. And what is the sin of one that is diametrically opposed to Torah, offends Yah, defies the Torah of Yah Yisrael Yah, he's going to destroy them out of it. Because this is a cruel world. You know, uh, Shalomo said in the book of Mishli that he says, uh, he says that, uh, he says that a Sodik man, uh, he will show mercy even unto the beasts. He said, and even uh, the mercies, the kindness, the tenderness of a wicked man is cruel. What a man is wicked, even their kindness is cruel. Even their niceness is cruel. Even when they want to be nice, you ought to just be nice to be nice. Is Yah nice? Sure he is. He's very nice. Even the mercies of the wicked is cruel. When they try to show you mercies, they're cruel and wicked. Yah said, I got to destroy that out of this. And it has come through the very delusion of this city, this uh, light that shines. Uh, and there is no light that shines like this light of what we call Christodom. Uh, you go down to Brazil, they got this damn image. All these folks, they come out of slavery. The, the progenitors of that land, they got this, this damnable white image uh, that stands up over the city, this pagan faggot uh, that they call Christo Christ Jesus. Uh, and that's what st 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 stands uh, in, that is the, at the height of the nation of Brazil. And we wonder why the damn poverty and the sickness uh, upon the nations. Uh, this is the nation that is of poverty. Uh, because uh, we look at ourselves, our vineyards, our vineyards have grown over with every kind of wickedness. Our hearts uh, have become encased with every kind of wicked practice uh, and deed that we don't even fear the name of Yah. We don't even fear the commandments. Uh, we don't even fear him at all. When Yah is terrible, his name is Yareh. It is Yareh. It is terrible. There was nothing like a boy. A young boy, I don't know the experience, but I know when they would tell, call out my mother's name, I knew how, what that would do. When a boy has been taught by his father and he knows he's doing something wrong, and they would say, oh, there go Mr. Mr. Cliff Martin. Boy, he, he began to tremble in his heart. He, he, the trouble addiction, he trembles at the name of his father. He trembles at the hearing of that name. He feared that name because it stands for justice and righteousness. What is right, commanding, that's what it stands for. When he got to the point where he could call his dad, he called him daddy, but when he could call him by his personal description, there was more than that, a son and father's relationship. It was a friendship, it was a love, it was a brotherhood, and that's what Yah tried to do with us through Yahshua Hamashiach, and we don't give a damn about it. Boy just didn't call his daddy by his first name. We give a damn how he got. Daddy will allow him to call him Mr. Mac. That boy, boy, he trembled at doing that. And Yah has allowed us to call him by his name. His terrible name. Hallelujah. And we think we're going to get by by some damn pagan fake name. Calling him Lord and God. And Jesus and blaspheme his name. Blaspheme his spirit. It's not going to happen, Yisraeli. Hallelujah. You can't go around. Can I move quickly? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish this today. That's the truth. Verse 10. It says, For the Kuchab, the brightness, look at how he identifies Isaiah 13 10. He says, For the Kuchab, the stars of Hashemayim, and the constellation thereof shall not give light. Those that we perceive to have this magnitude of great wisdom of Torah, knowledge of Torah. And those dirty whores in Hollywood, Horwood, that they call stars, there will be no light coming from that demented whore, that devilish Jezebel, the dirty whore, that promotes and uh, give us visions of these lying damn dogs. They call themselves preachers. 
They're not a re'ach of Almighty Yah, hallelujah. He says, and the shemesh of the sun, even the light of Yahshua the sun, shall be hosach. It shall be hidden. Yahshua is hidden today. He is the sun. He is the brightness of the righteousness of Yah. He is hidden from our minds today. That's why we don't tremble at the presence of Yah. I'm speaking to Yisrael, Yah. Damn this wicked world. Yah is going to destroy the sinners thereof. Now it's already damned, all right? You got a problem with that, you take it up with Yah. You say, damn this, damn that, Dave Roberts, die we Yisrael, Yah. No, I'm telling you what Yah says. He said, I'm going to shamad. I'm going to destroy them wicked, dirty devils. Out of the earth. I don't give a damn if it's your son, your daughters, your grandbabies. Uh, the ones that lay in the arms uh, weeping. He's going to destroy them. When Korah Dave started about and rose up against Yah, against Moshe, the message of Yah, Yah says, I will do a new thing. Uh, he calls hell to open up. Uh, and they all went down alive into the earth. Even the babies. The tough, 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 tough. The little ones. These dirty bastards say they love their children and they don't give a damn. I don't grin with them. Not me. I don't want their conversations. When a man puts his hand to the plow, he turns his back. When his conscience doesn't even fear Yah, he turns his back against Yah. Yah says it's not fit for the Mechul of Yah. Oh, my son, he, I, I just hate, nah, in all things I get told down. The wicked, dirty bastard turned his heart against Yah. And you want to gentrify him? Damn him. Damn the dirty Jezebel. I have a natural family. They all know how to find me. I cannot find any of them. But they know where to find me. I will not condescend. sin. I will not even play it off for any of them. And they know that. I will not turn from what is right to do to appease them or make some kind of association with them. They know that. That's why they don't mess with me. You have no one to love your hell. They don't love me. They, if you can't love Yah, how are you going to love me? If you love Yah, it shows you you love you. Because you try to save yourself. And if you can't love Yah and love you, how in the hell are you going to love someone else? You got this false image of love. And it's not the Ahab of Yah. He commands us first to love him. He commands us first to love him. If then he commands us to love us, that's why we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. How in the hell are you going to love someone? You don't love no one. We've been trained by this dirty whore. I lay myself open. Come and get it. I love you. That's what we think love is. That's what we have learned. What love is from dirty whores. From Hollywood. Hell, how is that love when they sleep with every man and every woman? Women with women, men with men. How do you, why do you think your children are messed up now? What do you think the girls at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old? How do you think that my uh, ish, uh, her natural sister died? And her little daughter, how old was she, 13? 13 walks in and said, I love women. And she tells her, you're going to hell. Well, hell, she was on her way to hell. We're hypocrites. Of course, they didn't come around me, did they? They were scared of me. I like that. They were afraid of me. These cowards are afraid of me. They are afraid of me. They're literally afraid because they can't master me when it comes to this. No, they cannot. Because I will break their damn wicked backs. And they know that. That's why they stay away. Hallelujah. Cannot go around. Can't go around. I'm going to finish this all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We know that you are sure to talk about even this taking place in Matitiya, this great disturbance of the cosmic. Uh, he talks about that. He says, uh, continue in verse 10, and the sun shall be darkened, it shall be hashach, hidden, and the going forth, and the yareach, yareach, shall not cause her light to shine, shall not cause her light to shine. You know what the yareach is for? It's the governor. He set forth the moon, the yareach, for the season of darkness, didn't he? We're a dark season, isn't it? He set forth the moon to be a light in the midst of the darkness. So in the midst of the darkness where he says, there shall not be the luminaries of men that will bring light to us in the midst of a dark upheaval in the earth today. 
because y'all say I have shut the light off and you can't find that today the minds of people are shut off from what is right today what is what is love they don't know what love is they don't know what they're cruel they're cruel to each other they're cruel to Yah, and they frankly do not give a damn about Almighty Yah. there's a price to pay Yisraya and that is high imat verse 11 is this Yah says and I will does it say that in your translation and I will pachad. does it say I will punish does it say I will is this Yeshaya or is this Yah Yah says and I will pachad. I will punish I will pay a special visit I will appoint unto them what is deserving of them I will measure out their lot unto them. I will pachad, I will punish, I will punish the olam, the creation of their ra, their damnable, twisted evil. And he says, I want you to know, you rasha, you wicked ones, that are hostile toward Yah. He said, and the wicked, for what? There of whom their iniquity, uh, the denying, the defying of the Torah, the Torah give honor unto Yah's Hashem, his name. Uh, and when one denies that they are operating uh, in the spirit of Ovon, uh, they are operating in the spirit of iniquity, uh, men don't understand the definitive of these words uh, and they give their meaning uh, whereby it loses its effective power in the mind of man. Uh, everything that Yah spoke was to have uh, an effect in us uh, to affect the outcome uh, of our disposition. And so they watered it down. They depleted the fire in trying to translate. That's why out of Israel should have come forth men of measure and strength uh, and kept the people of Yah in the language of Yah. Yeah. These damn false Hebrews, uh, they call themselves Hebrews. Uh, the Japanese in every land, their God uh, is known by a Japanese name. The gods don't have an American name, an English name. The Hungarians, their God has a Hungarian name. Those from Kazakhstan, whatever language, whatever dialect, their God has a name that is of uh, the language of Kazakhstan. The people of the Philippines, the Tugula, there is no word in the language for the word God. But they have what we call gods. But it's in the Tugula language, it's not in the English language. Uh, and you say you're a Hebrew, uh, and you call her a damn pagan Jesus, uh, you are a damn liar. Yeah. And yet you change your name. Yeah. Cannot go around, oh you, yeah. cannot go around. Yeah. We're going to start singing that song you love. As you sip it, he said, I can play that. Ah. So let there be love. Shed among us, let there be a hava in our land. May now your true sweet this house cause the ruach of your sure to arise. Give us a beautiful understanding. We're going to sing that. How about that? You might as well love me. Hallelujah. You might as well. You my friends. What else can you do? We can't do no worse than me. Hallelujah. I make this truth plain to you. I bring out the details. When I read ingredients on things, I say, what is that? I am just that ignorant, I'll go look it up and see what it is. Whoa, that's what that is? When I read ingredients, I will sit there for an hour looking up ingredients. I'll take the dictionary and just look it up and see, what is that? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Wow, they put that in this? We're gullible, we're ignorant, 
We think we know, we don't know a damn thing is that I am. And that's the truth. And when one does that, we will, we will tend to despise that. No, you don't despise that. Then they can reveal to you what you did know and make it plain unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a man to call me uh, from Detroit. He said, from Michigan, he says to me, he says, I, I like the way you bring it out. Just, you know, the he Hebraic and all that. Just keep doing it that way. He says uh, to me, he says, uh, people, they can't take you, preacher. They don't know how to. You're not going to have many that's going to be receptive of you. And that's the truth. I know that. I understand that. Hallelujah. That's all right. It's not coming down yet. Hallelujah. He says that he is going to, and the wicked, the rasha, for the iniquity. He said, and I will cause the ga'um, the arrogance, this exalted majesty of pride. We find that in this nation. I said to Ark Travis, I said, I, you know, we can purchase hotel for the Ark, but I don't want them to experience that. I want them to experience the nature and, and, and the beauty of the people there. You understand that people that sleep on the street, they, they, they'll be all right. They'll be all right. They're not bringing no suitcases. They're bringing a backpack. They're not co coming out and dress silly fly. They're coming to be a, to be a, a nasha, a blessing, a, a, a shalom to Yisrael. And, and not only that, but you to them. Have you got to pack 10 suitcases, uh, two tight dresses, uh, two tight shoes? Uh, talk to me. Look at a mess. They're thinking you fly. You're not fly. You look like a fly. A horse fly, okay? Yeah, I'm saying that to us, Yisrael. We've got to get this in shape. Dress it right and cover down. Forty inches all around. That's where they were singing in the military. Dress it right and cover down. Forty inches all around. You land, you land, you land, right, you land. I didn't want the soldier next to me to outdo me. So he was in for a battle. That's the way I was. He was not going to outdo me in the comprehension of the strategic, strategical process in the milchaya, the military procedure. Nor was he going to outdo me in jostling, rustling, battling each other in a intellectual uh, battle, statistical, factual, or convincing. I would not allow them to do me like that. And when it came to the physical mode, you had to put on your best shoes for that. You had to. When it came to the running, you got to run. I'm not a runner, but you got to run. When it came to the push-up, you got, you, got you got to pull them up. You got to push up. Came to the sit-up, you, you just got to show them what you got. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all I can to try to break your spirit. And I want to go first. So I want to pump out 500, and then you got a goal to shoot for, and then you're thinking about that. See, you, you're already in a hole. No, I, I, I'll go first. But no, 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 I, I'll go first. I don't mind going first. Because I'm going to give you something, because I'm, I'm going to draw on something I know you're not going to be able to draw on. I'm going to put it out and pump it out, pump it out, pump it out, pump it out. That's the way I am. I am that way. I am that way. I am that way. I've always been that way. Now, I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone. I always prove things to me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yah says he's going to cause the ra'un, this exalted pride that we see in this nation. In this damn wicked whole house. Oh, I belong to Fag T.D. Jakes. And I got a Mercedes Benz. And of course the Lord has blessed me. Oh, of course I'm down here with the defunct faggot dog. Yes, faggot dog. It is the long dog long. And I got a $300,000 house. The economy is going to crash. You see where your God will be, your damn twisted God. You got a twisted God that gives you a faggot and a child molester to lead you. You got a twisted damn God. And this big fat hog down there in Texas, they say that he doesn't address things like that. You got a damn fat hog of a God that loves chitlins and hog maws. Damn T.D. Jake's God. How about that? damn their gods I don't take it back he's gonna bring down and he says uh, the arrogance the 
of the Zeds, those that are prideful, those that are insolent, and those that are very presumptuous. I, oh, you know, I, I know what the Bible says. I know what the Bible says. You don't know what the Khafri says. I know you know what the Bible says. But you've been taught what to say, what to think, what the Bible says. But you don't know what truth says, man. They are full of Zeds, full of pride. Yes, I'm going to bring them down. He says uh, to cease. I'm going to cause them to decease. I'm going to cause them uh, not to even bear forth their heads. He says, and I will shafal. I will lay low. I'm going to bring them down to the ultimate humiliation. I'm going to bring them down to the abasement. I'm going to bring them down to the depth of the earth. Don't you hear that, that, uh, that Mr. Bonner and Mr. Barack Hussein Obama that they're talking about the deficit or they get the ceiling that we don't want to be brought down before the nations of the earth and something happened. These are just clowns playing on the mental massaging of the minds of the people. And they just plan you, the people like a whore, plays someone to think that he has done something to her that she has not experienced. That's all these dirty bastards are doing. That's all. They're just playing on the mind. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, we got to get them all out of the hell. You've had 43 white presidents. And don't tell me this little, uh, this, this little, he called himself a bastard. He said that. Don't tell me this little mulata that the powers that be have put it in uh, have brought this powerful rich nation down. This uh, damn gullible the people are. You've had 43 white ones. That's what you've had. Uh, Caucasians hell uh, and they brought it down to the damn dismal shame that is in today uh, and you put one little negro in there and you think that he is doing something he's not going to do a damn thing because his whole entourage of counselors uh, they are the same damn mindset of those from the beginning that enslaved uh, and brought people under the great bondage of heavy yoke uh, and destroyed others for their own damn greed what do you think uh, are you that damn ignorant uh, Hallelujah. You all must well love me. And if you're white, you got trouble. Kill that damn white nature because it's a wicked nature. You, you know, people will just go and look and try to define the word white. I can tell you where it comes from. I know. I'm going to write an article on that, a booklet, and show the people so that they understand. You should never want to call yourself white. Even if your skin color among Yisraya, just like the coat of Yosef, the skin color range from one of those colors were beautiful colors, weren't they not? So among Yisrael, the color from one extreme to the other, that's the broadness of the color of Yisrael. You understand? We're not black. We're either Yisrael or we're other Kohen, the nations of heathens. Now, I don't give a damn what you say. How about that, my friend? Hallelujah. Yon says, I'm going to lay low, I'm going to shafan, humiliate those that are haughty, those that are full of pride. And he says, uh, and the orits or the ruthless ones, uh, those that cause terror to be struck in the heart of many, I'm going to bring them down. This nation caused terror to be struck in the heart of many, doesn't it? It caused terror to fall in the hearts of many. Why? Is Yah doing this? Did not Yah in the book of Yira was not when they sought the mind of Yah was to eradicate the camp of that spirit of uh, blasphemy? Was it not for that purpose? When they sought, they put him in prison, they put him in the war, and they sought the mind of Yah. And that spirit of blasphemy, it has come through this ruthless whore that we call the church. Don't ever identify the people of Yah as a church. We're not a church. We are in the assembly of the tabernacle of the Sukkot, the outdoor gathering or the tents in the wilderness, but we're not a damn church. Damn the church. Damn the title of the church. Get it out of your psyche. Don't even address Yisrael that way you address them as the church so you are either Yisraya or you are a goim a part of the scattered nations or your damn heathen 
When I speak about this damn corrupt white man, uh, has nothing to do with one. Uh, listen, uh, that damn man doesn't care about those that call themselves white, that are poor. It doesn't give a damn. Uh, that man doesn't care about the, those kinds of people. Uh, they're trash. They call them white trash. Y'all get quiet. I don't give a damn. Let's just deal with the reality of truth. We got to get this filth out of us. We identify with one thing. That's Easter Raya. We identify with Yeshua. How many say we don't identify with no black man? We don't identify with no white man. We identify with Easter Raya. White men are dirty and wicked as hell. Black men are dirty. They've learned the ways of white men. They're wicked and dirty just like them. <clears throat> Hallelujah. There are folks that turn me off when I talk like that. And they know it's the truth. Why? Let them go down to the Baptist whole house and say, that's a lie. Take that down. You, you, if one speak against that, you will say he's racist. But are you racist with putting that damn picture up in here? Talk to me. Talk to me. And we ignorant Negroes, we will begin to defend that. I'm not defending that damn mess. I'm bringing that damn dirty hoe down. Everything that y'all gives me, she's a damn, she's a condemned, she's a judge, whore, she's filthy. And everything that he puts in this vessel, in this lab, in the strength of this man, I will hack on that buttocks. I will hack on that wickedness with all that he gives me. I won't spare it. I won't spare nothing in me. I won't spare nothing about me. Because I'm the partaker of this first. Even as it comes out of my mind, it judges every intent, every motive, every purpose of my life. I will not play with it. We played around too long. We are sported and act like jackasses and clowns. That's why we're in the dismal shape that we are in. We are the nation of Yisrael. We have been scattered to every nation of the earth. Not just a little speck of people here, but they are scattered. It's almost equal parts throughout the world, Yisrael. We are a scattered people. You're not going to identify them by the complexion of their skin because if you go to Puerto Rico as those that say, that say the Hebrews and those that are in the Isles of Puerto Rico, then they are of the tribe of this certain tribe of, they say that the ones in America are the tribe of Yehuda. I don't know how they even, uh, they even uh, know that. Y'all did not just scatter Yahudi here and Ephraim here and Yaakov here or Ruban here, Simeon here, Dan here. He scattered them all. And so when you go to that house, uh, you will find one in that house, his skin is as creamy as his, uh, brothers, uh, and one that is black as his. Uh, one whose skin is like his, uh, and one whose skin is like her skin. Uh, one whose skin is like that skin, uh, and one whose skin is like that skin. You find that. So are they Hebrews? You're an ignorant people. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Damn the white man! It has nothing to do with one's complexion of skin. You understand? Hallelujah. Tell those preachers to take their damn white mind, God, this damn Jesus lie down. They're not going to take it down. Someone, you all can take these CDs or burn DVDs and pass these around. People do that. I hear from people that say, someone gave me a DVD of yours. You did? Some of the preachers, someone gave me a booklet from there. They did. Pass it around, make copies, do what you please, and tell them that is the Mats man down there in Jefferson, South Carolina, all right? Can I go on, Yisraya? I want to show you an experience with Yisraya. They're in the land of Ka'an and Canaan. I want to move because I want to finish this. All right. I want to emphasize this in a strong fashion here. Hallelujah. I will read this out of Yeskel. No, hold that in Yeskel chapter 20. But go back to Yeshaya, Isaiah 52, verse 5. This is the nature of Babel and this rule of the Assyrians that we think that we're somebody and we're not the rule of this oppressive mindset in Yeshaya, Isaiah 52 verse 5 
Y'all says here, now therefore, what have I here? Says, I say, Yeshua 52 5 says that my people is taken away for nothing, that they have been brought under bondage and they don't even have nothing yet. You take them away from my service and you give them nothing. Hashatan, take us away from Yah. What does he give us? He doesn't give us a damn thing. Nothing. He said, and they that rule over them, make them to yala, make them to growl and holler and just curse Yah because they are oppressed. Say, says Yah, and Yah says, and my name continuously every day is Naat, it is blaspheme. It's not the name of Yah in this Babel, in this Assyrian mindset that oppresses Yah's people. It's not his name blaspheme every day. Yah. Do you not hear the name of Yah blaspheme? They try to intertwine it with the name of Jesus, Crusoe, Christ, Christ. And yet they damn the name of Almighty Yah when you mention that. He said, it's not my name, blaspheme, not answer, despise. It is spoken evil of. He says, it's not done every day. Do they not despise my name every day? He said, you should not take his Hashem in vain, in Shava. He that does so shall not be held guiltless. You understand, Yisra'ya? You're not going to be held guiltless. How? In the hellish nation of this world, huh? You want to take the name of Yah and misplace it or the name of Yahshua and translate it to a damn Jesus. But yet you translate your name that was John Willie Smith uh, unto Abraham Hashadach Yisrael. You are a damn hypocrite. You understand? You say truth? It is the truth. I'm not afraid to say it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. There's some dirt. You got to get down into that dirt. The earthen vessels, are we not? Simeon, he said to me the other day, oh, Simeon, he said, I tell you, Rhea, that dirt over there, it, over there in Garden Ford, you had to get down and you had to get down and dirty. That time she goes down and then, he said, you get so far and it's almost like a crust down that nothing wants to break. A stubborn, hard-headed earth. Hallelujah. It's been packed and we packed it down and rolled over and it's stubborn you keep sticking the tine in there, that sword shield crack. You got to get that for the subsurface or, or the aqua fresh to flow. We got to break, y'all got to break that damn hardness of our heart uh, in order to the flay of the sweet, savoring, uh, fresh well of the living water of your shield sure to flow uh, from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, my name is blaspheme, uh, it is not, it is despised, it is abhorred, it is detested, uh, it is sonne, it is hated every day, it is despised continuously, yeah, tomim, to, tomim, eternal, forever, always, uh, consistently, my name, continuously, he says, every, court you every day is blaspheme, every day, the name of Yah is blaspheme, it's an issue of his heart, Yisra'ya, we better begin to deal with that. Just call him by his name. No damn Greek superlative. Forget that mess that they have turned it into a Greek, Greek nice uh, name of it's in the renewed covenant uh, that we think is so. No, you search uh, the records of the old Yisrael. Yeah. No use that damn Greek. I hate it. The only word I will use in Greek, oh, there are a few, but one I will use when it comes to the miracles that these wicked horse talk about Simeon. I use that Simeon, 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 because that's associated with the Greek. Hallelujah. There are deceitful miracles. That's why the anti-Messiah shall come. He will come with miracles, deceitful, lying miracles to deceive the masses. Are not these men deceiving the masses? You got a faggot down there that lay hands and folks say they're healed? Talk to me, Yisra'ya. You got this huge fat hog of a dog, like a beast eating chitlins and pig feet, praying for someone, and say they're healed? They're liars, Yisra'ya. I will show us that. Moving quickly, here in the book of Yeskel, <clears throat> in Ezekiel, Yeskel, chapter 20, verse 27. 
he says unto the Nobi, therefore, he calls him a son of Adam, a son of man. And we have that nature of Adam. We have that nature to regress and fall back to flesh. He says, so he deals with the skill. He says, son of man, son of man. He says, son of Adam. He says, I want you to assar, to speak to Beat, the house, the elect, the covenant people. Speak to Beat, Yisra'ah. And he says precisely, say to them, instruct, teach, open up their minds, open up, reveal the knowledge. This, not Yeskel, but this says, this emphatically speaks the sovereign's Abba. Yeah, this is what I say. He says, yet, yet in this, your fathers, your avatar, has blasphemed, they have gadava, they have blasphemed me, uh, and that they have committed, uh, uh, they have committed trespasses against me. They have been unfaithful, they have been treacherous, they have blasphemed me. Uh, their signs or their sins a blasphemy, a blasphemy that is forgiven, and their blasphemy that will never be forgiven. For his name is his ruach, his name is him. That's the life the, or the spirit of his name. When you hear that name, you know the spirit that you're dealing with. You're not dealing with the spirit of Shalem or demons or, or Hashatan. When you hear that name of Yahweh, Almighty oh Yah, there's a life, there's a ruach that is associated with that name. Just like when you enter into a place, someone says, oh, that's Willie over there. There's a name and the spirit of Willie is associated. And folks know the man, Willie going to get drunk. He's going to act like a fool. Oh, he's already got a beer. You understand? Listen to me now. Or oh, there go Lucinda Jean Bell over there. Oh, man, she's a filthy, floppy thing now. Just watch it. Just, just wait a while. So you know the life of that name of that person. It is the spirit of that name. You know the life of that individual, the character, riches, the character. By the name, when you hear that name, is a spirit that, that is associated with that name. And it caused the life of that name to come alive in you. And you know what that name is all about. You know what that name is about. There go Big Daddy hustling, uh, slap back. You know, you know Big Daddy, you know what he was about. Uh, he was a gamer, man, your heart began to pop, he was ready to gamble. Uh, you know, uh, that was the spirit about Big Daddy, Big Daddy Mac, you knew Big Daddy Mac. Uh, that was the spirit about flossy flow, and you knew the heifer was a flossy flow, you understand? Uh, when you heard that name, uh, you began to conjure up everything about her, you knew what she was about. Uh, so is the name of y'all. He said, my name is blasphemed. They despise my name. They renounce it. They have not my name. They have rejected it. It is a horrible, it is a despicable thing to them. And they raise up a damn God. They raise up a filthy God, a filthy damn image out of the mind of a damn corrupt white mind. And they place it before the people and say, this is, a, this is the most high son. This is Yahshua HaMashiach. You damn liars. We are Hebrews and we call on the name of Jesus. Change your name back, hypocrite. They're hypocrites. Hallelujah. Oh, they got an answer for that too. You understand? Hallelujah. He did not have a go him a heathen name. He had a name that was a Hebrew because he came from a Hebrew culture. He did not come from the nation or the culture of the, the heathens. Hallelujah, hallelujah. They have trespassed, we have ma'al. Have we been unfaithful with Yah? Yes, I have. We have acted treacherously, have we not? That's why as, as I came from Dibarim, chapter 5, verse 8 to 9. You can read that. That's why Yah says you don't bow down to any God. You don't do that. And when the fathers, our forefathers have bowed down to these gods, it has caused the curse to come upon Yisra Yah down to the third and the fourth generation unto them that hate Yah. We say we don't hate Yah, but when you bow down to a damn faggot image and say that this is your sure, you hate Yah. You hate Yah. You go in these dirty whole houses and they got on the tables this big book with this picture of this freak on there. You bow down. And if you say something against it, they get upset. Well, oh, oh, don't say that. I will say it. 
Hallelujah. The Spirit. Yeshua emphatically as he spoke unto the Sanhedrins, those that were Torah intellectuals, and those that had knowledge of Torah here in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31, he says this emphatically. I want to show you the spirit. I want to close with some verses here, but I want to show you this now. He says in Matthew 12, 31, he says, I want you to understand wherefore or here I speak, I speak, I say to you. He says, all manner of sin, hata, sin, overtly, convertly, covertly, willing or unwilling. He says, and blasphemy shall be given to men. To men, because they're ignorant, they don't understand. We have blasphemed the name of Almighty Yah. All of us, Yisra'ya, because we did it in ignorance. When a man comes to the knowledge of the Torah, he don't transgress, he don't willingly sin. You know what is tough to do. You that knows what is tough to do and do it not, it is a sin. You know the Torah is tough to operate in. Uh, and if you don't operate that, it's sin. So he's speaking. Uh, I know we want to think that, well, I can go from now and just blaspheme you. You are a damn fool. He said, all that shall be forgiven, uh, amen. He said, but the blasphemy against the Ruach HaKodash shall not be forgiven to men. When one blaspheme, when one speak vile against the very nature of the Ruach, Yah is a spirit. He is a Ruach, is he not? When one speak uh, with this vile gaun, this pride, this exalted majesty against his name, uh, you speak it against uh, his Ruach. Yeshua said the words that I speak unto you. Did he call on the name of his Abba? He said the words that I speak unto you. They are what? Spirit. They are Ruach and they are life. They are high yield. They are the higher of Yah. Did he not speak that? So the name of Yah is a spiritual name. And when you call upon that name, you invoke the power of his Ruach. And you know that the power of his Ruach is in you. You cannot call upon that name unless the Ruach of Yah give you power, the spirit of Yah, to call on that name. Those that have not the spirit cannot adhere to that name. They don't want to hear it. They got the spirit of the damn Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will make sense as I proceed. Yah says I will not forgive them. There will be no forgiveness of that at all. I want to show you Yisrael. Why this sin cannot be forgiven? Because I want to reveal unto you in the book of Gilyana, the greatest blasphemer of all time. We must understand this. You know why Yah cannot forgive that one that blasphemed the Ruach HaKodesh? Because the Ruach of the spirit of a blasphemer, it is the spirit of Hashatan. Shatan was a liar from the beginning. He did not abide in the Torah, the truth of Yah. You understand? I will show you the precedence of that as I teach. Remain here out of the book of Gilead, Revelation. Turn your attention to that. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And Yochanan saw this tremendous wild beast, this wild government rising up out of the midst of a disgruntled, wicked people as the sea or the mass of the people is represented by the sea. He said, I saw this beast rise up out of the sea, out of the multitudes of the people. He said, and out of this false, delusional, anti-Hamashiach voice, he said, how Shatan gave him voice, and we've seen this uh, we have seen this is going to be this is going to escalate into a Pacific finite type of uh, individual. Not only that, but we see it in the mindset of this anti Hamashiach. Uh, it rises up out of the midst of the people. We see this religious uh, a perverted spirit that has risen up out of the midst of the people for one purpose, uh, and that is to cause this anti Hamashiach mind uh, to be developed in the hearts of many. He says in Revelation 13, 1, he said, And I stood. And I stood upon the sand 
other sea upon the multitude and those that were on the outskirts of the people, those that were not as important as the masses of the people, or the sands of the sea. And he said, and I saw, I saw, he said, I saw a beast. I saw this anti hamashiach I saw the nature of this Jesus, this Jesus Christ. I saw this rise up out of the people, out of the sea. He said, and this one had authority of the kingdoms that were, that all of its composition was from the kingdoms before this mighty kingdom that we call America has arisen. The Medio Persian, the Bavel, the Roman, the Grecian. I saw this one rise up out of this uh, constitution of this government of wickedness uh, every nation of wicked you can be a faggot uh, everywhere you can be a faggot uh, and be proud you can be a faggot and a bull dagger and be proud he says i saw this uh, rise up in these damn whorehouses uh, they're full of faggots i guarantee you you go down there to td james you probably got thousands of faggots there and they're given that money i guarantee you and that fat, whole, greasy, eating pig, he's not going to say a damn thing because they bring him in the cash. Eddie Long, you play with the dog, he's going to lick you. I don't want no faggot around me now. I don't want no damn sissy around me. Go on, man. Go, go ahead now. Don't, don't touch me now. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go on now. I don't want that around me. No more than a bull dagger. Stupid, twisted woman thinking you're a man. I'll knock you out. No man. Trying to let the big titties flop down to make you think you got a chest. You ain't got nothing, man. Come on. You got a glob of fat titty meat. Talk to me, woman. You ain't no man. Trying to cock your hat to the side and trying to walk like a man. I'm just saying in my days, when a woman was a bull dagger, she hid herself. When a man was a sister, he sure enough hid himself because they would get knocked out. You didn't play that in my days. Go ahead. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. And that has become the creed of this wicked nation to honor sisters. I'm not going to do any sis any harm. I'm not going to tell anyone to do any fact any harm. Just leave me alone. Don't try to impose that damn wickedness on me, man. I'm not going to accept it. I'm not going to honor you as no woman. You will go to hell. Just leave me alone. Go on and go to your faggot. You can do all your faggot stuff all you want to. Just leave me alone. You can fag day all. You can fag day and night. Just leave me alone. You can go out here and fag all night with anybody you want to. Just don't come near me, man. Just go on. And hear me, my fag. You don't have to worry about me. You don't have to worry about me intruding, coming on your corner and preaching against the facts. I wouldn't waste y'all's beautiful word uh, on, such be uh, on such wicked, dirty swines and dogs and cast that which is pure unto them dogs to, to trample it under their feet and rent and turn against me and say, let's kill this crazy preacher. I wouldn't waste my time for that. Hallelujah. I wouldn't waste y'all's time. So go on, faggot dog. Uh, don't try to impress me. And tell me that this is norm. This is wicked and out of hell. He says, so rise up out of the sea, having this kingdom authority, this power, and the crowns. And he says this, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. You understand, written in his head was the name of blasphemy. There's only two distinct differences or two distinct uh, identities uh, or oath or uh, signs uh, we know that out of this spirit out of this nature those uh, that are anti hamashia and the name of blasphemy out is the crown of their conscience uh, so it is with the people of yah hallelujah there's something that uh, identify our crown here in revelation Juliana. i want to move back one chapter hallelujah move up Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1 just like he said in 13 and I stood on the sands of the sea in verse 14 chapter 14 he said and I looked and lo a lamb he stood on Mount Tizangon and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their forehead. Hashatan, this power of anti, when he got the power of Hashatan, the first order of his business was to blaspheme the name of Yah. 
and you find someone blaspheming the name of Yah, they have that written in their conscience. They will fight for that damnable name of Jesus, but they will not stand for the name of Yeshua. How much I don't give a damn if it's the Baptist, the Methodist, they may come against each other, they may not fellowship, but they are all of the same spirit of blasphemy and the same nature. It is an anti Yah spirit. And that power is not revealed, but by her short time. He gave him power. And look what was written. And on his crown, upon his head, and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. Upon his head, his rush, his kingdom, his authority, his place of power is a place of blasphemy. Upon his rush, his rush, his crown, his cassé, his cassé, his diadems. The name of blasphemy. Yeshua say, you're not going to be forgiven for that. Blaspheme it against the ruach, the power of God's nature, his spirit. You're not going to get forgiven. How do I know? Can I show us some examples before I close? Will you believe the book instead of me? Let me be a liar, but let Yah be the truth. Damn me. You understand? Can I read this, please? Okay. In the book of Revelation, the same chapter, Revelation, chapter 13, verse 6, it says this, that this is the anti-Hamashiach, this is Hashatan, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Yah. You hear that? Does it say that? Gileana 13, 6. And this anti, they open their mouth, it is blasphemy against Yah. Against him, now listen now against Yah to blaspheme his name and to blaspheme his tabernacle and them that dwell in Ha Shema'an that is his birth the zira the seed that he sows to blaspheme the name of Yah and it comes by this religious horn and those that are under the auspice of the power of this dirty bastard they're going to blaspheme Yah and they're not going to be forgiven well, Yahshua said, yeah, we were ignorant. But Yah says this here in Revelation chapter 16, too. And verse 9, hallelujah. And he's talking about the vials that the Melachim had received from Yah. And the vials of death to be poured out upon the people. And you think that it will make them change? They will love Yah? It's not. Listen to what it says, all right? It says here, and though it talks about here in Revelation chapter 16, Gilyana and verse 9. This is the fourth vial or the bowl. It is poured out upon the sun, now what it says, and it is to scorch men. We're having a little taste of what the heat is like with the sun. When man has done all he could to destroy the very veil of heavens. Y'all never intended for it to be like this. Sin has made it like this. He made for us to live comfortable, Yisrael. That we will not take advantage of all the things. Uh, we use a little fire to cook with. We should not be having fire to heat with and all this. Uh, and polluting the air with air conditions and all of them. We are never intended for that. It's sin that has entered in Israel. Yeah. That's why Bada said I was a dam today. Yeah. They want the dam. We can't even stand the heat a little bit. That's the truth. Look what it says. When the fire was poured out upon the sun uh, to scorch men. Uh, it says in verse 9. And men, they were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed name of Yah. They sense the heat and yet they blaspheme the name of Yah which had power which had power which had power over the plagues and they repented not to give him honor. He said damn him and I won't repent. The spirit is powerful that's why it had to be eradicated. They talk at the top of the damn Jesus talk. They're sowing the spirit of Anta Hamashiach. You said, I caused the heat to pour down and the heavens and the heat and the problems and circumstances on their minds to vex them, to beat them down, and they still damned me. And I had power to deliver them. And they did not make Teshuva. They did not shoot. They did not turn around. They did not change. They're not going to change. But well, that's not enough, it isn't. Okay, I'll take you a little deeper then. It's enough for me. It's enough for me. I'll take you a little deeper then. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In chapter 21, I mean chapter 16. Hallelujah. 
This was the fourth vial, when uh, the fifth vial, I believe. When the, when the vial was poured out upon the, upon the air, it says that in the verse above this, Revelation 16, 21. I just have verse 21 here. But it was poured out in the air. You understand that air is what we all need. We need the, we need the air to breathe and to live. No? So Yah poured that out on the air to destroy, to come against the anti-Hamashiach spirit, and to get all the enemies of Almighty Yah. Now this is what it says here in Gileadah chapter 16, verse 21. And that fell upon men. Now you have to understand this. Great hell out of Hashemaim. Every storm about the weight of a talent. Do you all know what a talent is? I'll tell you. I just want, you know, we have been trained to be dumb as hell. We don't give a damn. We don't search nothing out. We search out every kind of damn trivial, filthy damn piece of garlic, a garbage of gossip. Yes, we will. I tell folks, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't give a damn. That makes me no different. I'll tell you what a talent is. How many of y'all can pick up 50 pounds? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand. 50 pounds, would that be hard for you to pick that up? What about 100 pounds? A talent is 200 pounds. You know, you've never heard folks say, it seemed like the weight of the whole world is on my shoulder. You know, heard folks say that? They were burdened down and beat down with burden. You've never heard that? In my days, I heard that. I heard that. You heard that, Emma? Okay, then, talk to me. Somebody, please. Folks, they seem like the way the whole world is about you. I just get buried. I just have everything. Yo, I don't know what to do. He poured out the vial upon the air on what that they drew life from and their suffering. But this whole damn wicked world is going to crush down. When their wall streets and the oligarchies and their powers that be, when their structure fall, it's going to be a hellacious destruction. Even the rich and the poor man is going to suffer. You understand? And your damn silver and gold ain't going to do a damn thing. Yeah. By all the damn silver and gold you want, it's not going to save you from the wrath of Almighty God. Yeah. Ain't no doubt about that. Put your money in your damn bank accounts. Uh. It's going down to the gates of hell. It's going to be burned. Uh. He says, uh, and, and there came, it came uh, by the weight of a talent of weight. You, can you imagine? Uh, come on, Israel. Can I show you something? If you think that you think that you got something, we got hundred pound weights over there, just one. We got one hundred pound dumbbells. If you want to find out just how tough you are, Yah said, I'm going to show my wrath and the hell of my nature. You don't know me. You take that hundred pound weight. If you can get it here, your daughters of Tizayona, and put your foot out like that, all right? You, you all watch me on camera. Take a hundred pound weight, go to the go to the, the sporting goods store and pick it up the bottom right here. I doubt if any of you women can do that. You cannot take a hundred pound weight and do it like that. You can't do it. Not any of you. I don't care what you say. And bring it about right there and just drop it right there on your foot. And see what you're going to say. All right. All right. Talk to me. You're going to do more than skip to the loo on that one. You're going to do more than jump it out. And we'll find out whether you're going to curse then. Hallelujah. 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 Yah says that this wicked mindset, Yisrael, I understand this mindset, Yah got to destroy. He's got to kill every blasphemer. But a man knows that it's the truth. You know that his name is not some damn Jesus. Uh, and you purport that lie, you're in trouble, my friend. Uh, hallelujah. He says about the weight uh, of a talent. And men, and men, the strength of the land. And men, the head of order. And men blaspheme Yah. They didn't repent, they blaspheme Yah of the plagues of the hell. For the plagues thereof, they were exceedingly great. Even Pharaoh had enough sense to say, Moshe, call on you, Abba. Tell him we're going to let your people go. And Yah says, I raised you up for purpose, Pharaoh, and you're not, no, no. Okay, Moshe, I hear you. I'm teaching you something, boy. You're going to trust me in all things. When I say let my people go, he's going to let them go. And I'm going to bring them to desolation. And then old Pharaoh would, in his arrogance, Yah said, I'm going to harden your heart, you dirty bastard. And he will put more pressure on them. And that's what this wicked world is doing today. It's putting pressure on the 
in the, the indolent and the poor people of the world put pressure on us. Heard this damn filthy senator hack out there in Utah say the poor people need to do more. How in the hell, what, what do they have to do more with? You take everything they got, they don't have anything. They work for the master, the lords, and they give you everything back. They give it back to your friends, which you all distribute. They don't have a damn thing. What can they give? That's how cruel this mindset of this anti Yah is because the government uh, and the mission of Yah, his government, his order is perfect. And every man, no man goes lacking in the government of Yah. This whore has taught you to be selfish and wicked and cruel. Even in your kindness, we're cruel to each other. Hallelujah. Yes, man. And men did not even, why would you think that they were blasphemer? And they did not even, they did not even repent of their deeds. Uh, this dirty whore, she has been the, she has been the conduit of the spirit. It is a very subtle spirit that gets in the heart and she writes it in our minds, in our foreheads, and we don't know that Israel. Yeah. That's why it takes the sword of the Ruach, it takes the Ruach of Yah to eradicate that out of our mind because this is her dress here. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 3. Turn here quickly. Yochanan, for this he had to be carried. He was carried away in the Ruach of Yah. He could not just stand for this. He says in Revelation chapter 17, verse 3, so the Melak, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> listen to this. So he carried me away in the Ruach into the wilderness. He said, and I saw this woman, this dirty whore, this church. She sat upon the scarlet colored beast, <clears throat> this religious spirit that has come out of Yisraya, <clears throat> because of her flirtation with all the gods and the god spirits. I'm going to teach one day. I got the teaching. I did it over a year ago. I, oh, it's longer than that. Of the colors, the colors uh, of, the, of this whore. And I will show you what they all represent, Yisraya. I see stuff like this. I want to know. I want to see what the Torah says about it. I have it. I've done it. I don't sit there and play games all day. I study the book. I don't sit there and complain. I study the book to refine my mind uh, that it may be like the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm not boasting, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I saw this woman set upon this scarlet colored beast. It says, full, listen now, full, full of the names. Does it say that in your rendition? Of the names of what? Love or blasphemy? Full of the name of blasphemy. Full of the name of Jesus and Lord and God and Be'el. Full of the name of blasphemy. Well, I got my own faith. You know, you don't have the imuna of Yah. You can have all the damn faith you want to. But I have the imuna, the measure that he has given unto every man. The imuna of Yah. Full of the name of blasphemy. I don't give if it's damn, uh, if it's the Baptist, they're full of blasphemy. I don't care if it's Pentecost, it's full of blasphemy. Because they all came out of this subtle, wicked whore that has gone and traversed in her own way to establish her own righteousness. You better get the damnness out of you, Yisraya. You better clean yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and the Ruach and begin to perfect the set apartness of Yah in Yeshua HaMashiach. Full of the names, full of the names of blasphemy. Their names, their nature, their spirits of blasphemy. The damn name Jesus is a spirit uh, that opens the door to spirits of powers of blasphemy against the Ruach of Yah. What that was not done in his Jesus name, so it ain't right, your damn law. That name produced the powers of Shaddam's uh, demons and devils uh, to be fur of the eyes. They talk about this lying devil, old Roberts. There's not one organic healing that he's ever done. There's no records of it. And yet the media promoted this line there. What did they? There's not one. Been in here, there's not one organic. They go to the doctor where she is always something that is internal and invisible. They don't, you don't see nobody. Yahshua healed them of pause and they were crooked and broken. <laughs> Woo! Get up from here! It's not what I've got a healing. Uh, these old damn shallow line preachers uh, will I heal you of strife. You're a damn liar. They're always healing of something that is invisible. Show me something, man. He calls her death raise. Heal them of palsy. Bodies crooked, leprosy. 
They're always doing something like that in the visible. You can find Benny Hinn, all the folks come that cripple, they put them over here. What's wrong with you? Oh, I had this burning inside of you, you're going to preach, and I'm just not burning. Ha! <laughs> you say what, my friend? Right. I like that. Right. What's wrong with you? Well, the doctor said I had a tumor. And when you spoke to her, what happened to her? Well, hell, if you can look at a crowd and look at the people, their physical condition, you can just name off any disease. Somebody got it. We are dumb. We are stupid. We are gullible. And I had this burning over here. And it just happened. You know, you, just, you got the healing. Oh, woof. What's wrong with him? Well, he has something. He said in his head up here. And when you say, lay your hands on your right side of your head, he, he, he laid his head. He said, Mama, I'm feeling better. And he just, uh, the doctor said he got that. Oh, woofa, pua. He spit on him. All he wants is the money, honey. Bring me the dollar bill, damn you. He tells the folks that. Not one organic healing. Not one organic healing. Not one organic healing. Or Roberts and Lisi had another sister say, hell, I'll build you a hospital. We'll go that way. Not one organic healing of Or Roberts. Not one. Not one on record. Not one. Everything is always invisible. These men like Brenham, these lying dogs, that these spirits came to him. He was a damn dirty dog. That's why this perverted thing down here south of us always talk about Brenham. Because he's a damn pervert, he's a damn dog, he's a dirty bastard slip. Cannot go around. I'm going to finish in a minute, all right. Don't go nowhere. Hallelujah. Full of the name of blasphemy, having said head, seven heads and ten horns, the order of the kingdoms of the world, everything that they establish is by the spirit of blasphemy. Everything. We must blaspheme his name. We must do it in subtle ways, deceptive ways to seduce this stupid mind of the masses or the sea of people. She said, and he says, and the woman was arrayed in purple. All this is significant. I'm going to teach on these things. I was thinking the day we have a lot of people that are signing up for the newsletter. I need to start writing and things, but I have to labor out here. When you get out there in that 100 degree weather and you work all day, uh, it's difficult to write. But Yah's going to grant me that. There are many things that I can write. I'm an ignorant man, but there are a lot of things I know. There are a lot of things I know. There are a lot of things I know. A lot of things. I'm abreast, aware, I'm conscientious of a lot of things. There are a lot of things in the Torah and Scripture I can write on. And I can write it with a preciseness, with a thorough knowledge. There are many people, when they, when they call me and write me, they say, you bring it out so that we can understand. And there are things that I can do. I'm not boasting. Yah has enabled me to do that by his ru'ah. It's nothing I can boast in because I'm not worth a damn. You understand? He says that, hallelujah, that the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. We see this arraying of the Catholic whore, but this was the decking of Yisra'ya as well. I will show you in the, in the Levi. I will show you when I teach this Yisra'ya. What did Yisra'ya do? They went out there, every god, didn't they? They went on the every bay tree to... To lay with the goddess and the gods, didn't they? These are the coverings and the decans of Yisra'ya. And decked with gold and precious stone. Who had such precious stones and things like Shalomo to build the temple in his house? Nobody. And pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of pigul, abomination and filthiness, uh, na, uh, nafal of abominations, of fornications. And it says... Someone turn quickly, Zakin Yaramiya, Revelation 14.1. Just turn back, Revelation 14.1. Read that loud. And I look, and lo, a lamb, stood on Mount Zion, and with him, with him 144,000, having, having his name, and his father's name, and his father's name Written in, written in their what? Forehead. forehead. He said, and upon her head, and upon her forehead was a name what? 
Upon her forehead was a name what? Upon her forehead was a name what? Her time it was written. What was her name? Mystery Babylon. The great uh, Babylon the great. The mother of harlotry and the abomination of the earth. What is the rule of her government? Her power to blaspheme the name of Yah. She is the mother of all abominations. She is the mother of the abominable name Jesus and Lord and God. Written in her name. What was she full of? She was full of the names of blasphemy in Revelation 17, 3, was she not? And because she's full of that, then every kind of pigul, or pigul every kind of filthy to a abominable filthiness come out of her. Nothing comes out of this whore you call the church but filthiness to cause you to blaspheme his name. This raya for us, we must be taught of the nature of this whore that we will not blaspheme to speak evil against Yah, to na'at, to ga'af, to despise, to speak ruthless against the ru'ah. And there are those that have spoken against the messenger of Yah and they don't even know what they are doing. And that is the truth to say that this is not of Yah Challenge me in the book, you as well. May the riches of Yah rest upon Israel. I am tired, all right? Whoa, out. I wanted to take my time and do things in a delicate way, but it's just not in me to do that. Hallelujah. May the riches of Yah rest upon Kul Yisraya, you that have joined us. We do hope that Yah has brought and strengthened you this day in a way that that your heart has been fattened by his truth uh, and that the words will be a delight. I'm not here to try to make you happy with me. I don't care if you're not happy with me. That's not an issue with me. I'm here to tell you the truth, what is written in the book. I gave you a simple resume of Yah that you may understand who he is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we barak you all. May Yah's riches rest upon you and your Shua Hamashiach. We do pray for all of you all, our friends, uh, our Ach Dawi there in Scotland, Ach Dawi Nesha and his, his Shah and the family, Yabarak, you that are in, wherever you're listening from, may he strengthen you all, our Ach there in Jamaica. Miss them, don't we? I know I do. Miss their Ru'ah, the spirit, until it's quiet, quieter, hallelujah. But that's all right, this thing is coming down whereby uh, the warriors will have to labor, and we can't be... We can't be melancholy about Yah because this one is not here, that one is not here because we don't have the kind of rhythmic piano playing. That doesn't mean a damn thing to me. We get caught on stuff like that. Let's sing to Yah. And the folks in the days, even though old folks in those places, they sing better than we do. And no one tried to harmonize the sopranos, the altos, did they? They just sing. Get in ready to go down to Zion. 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 I'm looking for Yeshua down in heaven. Who else looking for Yeshua down in heaven? Who else looking for Yeshua down Looking for Yeshua down Then they were singing. Won't be long, oh, if I go in town, won't be long, oh, if I go in town, 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 we polluted everything. He said for us to let every instrument praise him. Hallelujah. Now it's not that way men with their flesh. They want everyone to know what they can do. But they sing from the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even in all the ignorance, 
Y'all look down upon that generation and say, they're my people. And I shall make known the riches of my power unto Israel. Aren't you glad they suffered much for you, for us? May the riches of Yah rest upon you, all Israel. Above all things, be encouraged. Allow Yah to strengthen your bosom, to make your heart fat. Don't be discouraged when He corrects you. Do not despise Yah when He corrects you. That Yah brought you all Israel. Let us stand to our feet, and as we face the city of Yah, Yah Rishon Lightning. In all things, Yah, we brought you for your kindness. And all that you brought unto us, we want to bring before you our hopes uh, and our difficulties and trials as she wrestles with those circumstances that you touch her, yeah. You know her by name, and you know where she is in our living. And so we put it in your hand. You're able to do all things. We pray for our uh, uh, even against the opposition. It's excellent for them in the sparring and the battles. Even if they lose the battles, they don't lose the war. But they hold fast the Imuna. Bless them. Our sister Hawkins, our Chod Hawkins. And all Yisrael, yeah, wherever they're scattered, touch them in a mighty way. Strengthen your people. I know and we know our sins are forgiven. We rest in the assurance of that. And you assure us, mighty name. Give us guidance. Protect us. Take our Zachim Zimri and our Ime down the road safely and our uh, Holtz platform and all Yisrael, yeah, bless those that join us, our enemies. We told you for them, yeah, for there is no gain saying that they can say against your truth. We ask it all in Yahshua's name. We're glad that we're here in Teshua. You have granted us a beautiful place in there. We told you for all things. I do for all of your blessing, the food and everything you grant unto us, your health and Yahshua. Heal us all that we heal. Heal all Israel, heal all of your people scattered abroad. We pray for the safety of Azahim Yesha as he travels down to Atlanta to Duluth on Monday as he drives, leaving out. Take them safely, we ask. And all Israel, all the elders of Azahim throughout this nation and the world, we pray for them in Yahshua's name. The leaders, we pray for the Shalom of Yahushua Shalaim as we barak in Yahshua's name. And with our voices, we cry hallelujah. 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 Yabrak Yisrael.